Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today, we are back, back for the new year. Took a little break around the holidays. We are back with episode number 45, just in time to make our 2024 All Star ballot. Voting is wrapping up this weekend, Saturday, January 20th. So if you have not gone over to NBA.com and voted for your favorite favorite players, make sure you go and do that if you want to get them a chance to get into the All-Star game. But on today's episode, we are going to give our full 12-man East and West roster for the All-Star team, which I have to say was extremely difficult to put together. I genuinely think this is probably the most difficult it's ever been in the history of the NBA to make an all-star team. I cannot think of a time where there was more talent in the league playing as well as they are to start the season. There's so much parity right now in the league, so it's not like you can even just give favor to you know some of the top teams and throw two, three guys out there because it's a lot of teams like are right in the mix from like seeds four through like 10 are only mm-hmm. separated by a few games. Um, so this was, this was extremely difficult to put together, uh, but we're going to get into all that because we had to make the tough decisions. It's not going to be a year. I tell y'all when the teams do come out, there's not going to be one snub or two snubs. People are going to be on Twitter up in arms about like five or six guys, not making an all-star team. Uh, so it's going to be tough, but going to get the housekeeping out of the way. As always, if you are watching on YouTube, be sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on audio platforms, Go ahead and pre-download the show and leave us a five-star rating. Um, and follow us on the socials that you see there at the bottom of the screen, at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. Before we get into our all-star, all-star ballots, how are we doing, Dan, bro? How's the holidays? How's the, the new year been treating you, bro? It's been treating me well, man. It's been treating me well. It's been good. Life's been good. But, you know, I'm excited to get back into you know, recording the pod, getting back to consistent uploads and things like that. So I'm excited, man. I'm ready to get into it. Definitely, definitely ready to get back into it. Had the itch, bro, turning the, the you know, the, the ring light back on, put the microphone right. and the camera back on. Feels good, bro. Feels right. Right. Um, with that, I'm going to go on a, a slight rant real quick because I know we just talked about how hard it was to put together these teams. That's because there's only 12 slots. When they did the first – all-star game in 1950 there was 10 slots on each team it was only 11 teams in the league bro how did y'all triple the size of the league and we've only added four all-star slots since then it's not enough bro it's not even close to like y'all they'll see they'll see because somebody that i'm telling you now is gonna be y'all so dumb y'all don't know ball how come brother that didn't make it bro you you make a list it is you hard. You make a list, bro. And there, and it's, like, it's not even like a you You might miss someone. Every single list will miss at least three people or three or four people. At right. least three or four people. That probably should be an all-star. Right. So i letting y'all know in advance. Once you get to these last couple of people, those little wild card reserve spots, bro, it's a toss-up. It's literally a toss-up. You can make, and like acknowledging it on the front end, you can make a very fair and real argument for – like five guys for these last slots. And mm-hmm. on the West, it might even be more. It might be like seven, maybe eight. For real. Only two wild card dudes can get in to fill out those last two slots on the roster. So it's going to be an interesting, you know, all-star roster this year. Obviously, more guys are going to get in than just 12. People get injured every year, unfortunately. And some guys may just, you know, sit out, want rest during the game. So, There'll be a couple guys who don't initially make it who get in as injury replacements, but still, there's going to be three, four guys probably in both conferences who have legitimate cases that it's just not enough room on the roster for them. Mm -hmm. So, Adam Silver, if you're listening, bro, in 1960, 25% of the league got to be in the All-Star game, bro. Now it's only 4.7%. I don't think we need to get up to a quarter of the league being all stars, clearly, nah. but it's got to be more than four, bro. I can do like 20, 15, 15. Right. Just make it the size of a normal roster. You added the two two way slots. That's bumped it up to basically 15 roster spots per team. Give us a couple more slots on the all star team. It will make doing this a lot, a lot easier. Facts. Guarantee that. With that, matter of fact, I'll let you pick. You want to start with the East or the West? Let's start with 
Uh, let's start. Let's start with the East. No, let's okay. start with the East. I feel like I always say start with the West. Let's start with the East. I think that's the right move because the East is definitely, at least in my opinion, was easier than the West. The West is a dogfight. The West is crazy. Just trying to put that bench together. The East felt a little bit easier. Um, so let's start with the East guards. Two guys I have in that slot, and I'm sure one of them is probably the same on both. I have Tyrese Halliburton starting at one of the guard spots. Um, he's just uh, – and he also might potentially be a guy who might miss the game depending on you know his right. injury, which get one of him soon because that did not <clears throat> bust in a full split on the court. Um, but obviously he's having a historic season right now. Um, basically putting up 12, I mean, not 12, 24 points um, and 12 and a half assists per night. Ridiculous, ridiculous assist to turnover ratio. Um, he's been fully engineering that that Pacers offense and has been having them, you know, having one of the best seasons they've had in a very long time. Uh, so he clearing away, I think, has to be a starter on this team. Probably three guys you could consider for this second starting spot. I ended up giving the nod to Donovan Mitchell. Um, he is averaging to over 28 points a game, almost six assists, uh, five and a half rebounds and almost two steals a game too. He's ranks, uh, 11th in the league and estimated plus minus. He has them in a position where they looked like, you know, once they kind of got hit with that injury bug between Darius Garland and Evan Mobley, that they could have won a you know, a real skid, um, and found themselves in a, a bit of a scary spot out East, but. Um, you know, as of right now, they're sitting at the four seed again. They're part of that mix. If you watch that Miami Heat video that I put out last week, they're part of that mix of teams that's within like 15, 16, 17 wins, but they're sitting at the top of it right now. So they have as good a shot of anybody to really kind of separate themselves out of that pack. Um, and a lot of that is due to the play of Donovan Mitchell. So I have him as the, the second starting guard out there. 100%. I got the same, too. <laughs> I got Donovan Mitchell and I got Tyrese Halliburton for the same exact reasons. You know, Hallib Tyrese Halliburton, like I said, historic season. That offense is at, playing at a historic rate. Um, and he's really had, like, a huge breakout. You know what I mean? He's just – he's been hooping. He's been playing really well. Hopefully, he actually does come back and is able to play in the game. That would be awesome. But if mm -hmm. not, you know, he still deserves a nod as far as right. the vote. And then, obviously, the main reason, for, like you said, because it could, is a toss-up between a lot of the guards of who should be the starting guards. But – the fact that Donovan Mitchell has them in that four spot, uh, like with the injury that they had, that's the reason why I gave him the nod. So pretty much same exact reasons, same exact two starting guards. Yeah, it's it was tough. And we, I, once we get into this this bench, um, you'll see there, there was guys who I think all had legit cases to be starters. And again, it just goes to show how crazy the talent is across the league right now. Mm -hmm. Like from just a pure counting stats perspective, like these are cases like year in year. If you, if you rewound 10 years, do you average in like 26 and seven all-star starter and you're an all-star starter? Lock. It's a lock. Like bro, back, back then it was like, tw you get 24, 24 at night was a lot back then, bro. Right. Like, the people don't realize bro, 30 now, 28 now that that's, it's, it's not the same, bro. You average 28, 10 years ago, you were eight. Mm -hmm. You might lead the league. You're probably leading the league in scoring. 50 is the new 30, bro. Dudes be dropping 45, 50-plus points way more regularly than they ever used to. Bro, 30 don't even feel like I like – you look up like, Luke got 30. Okay, cool. That's – right. got 30. Like, that's you not – it'll, it'll hit the same. It's crazy because back in the day, it would be like, you see somebody put up like 35 points. I, I need to see the highlights. But it's like everybody's putting up 30-plus points. I just can't even – if I wasn't locked into that game – if I'm not going back to like really watch the gameplay of it, it's like I might not I'm not as interested as I felt like I used nah, to be. It, you don't really. It feels like you're not missing out on as much as you used to. You're not. It's like somebody about to drop thirty tonight too. It ain't that special? Yeah, about you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> somebody else about to do it. And, it. and depending on the player, it like, like I said in Luca case, if he like, Luca give you forty, I'm like it's Luca. He gonna give you like bro. It depends. Like certain <laughs> players, like all right, cool. Some like role player goes for forty. Like all right, hold on, let me see what what happened, but. Certain people, bro, the scoring has just gotten so crazy. Like you said, it's just not – it doesn't hit the same. Don't get me wrong. I, I love it. I love that everybody's been able to score, but it just – it don't hit the same, bro. And that's why also comparing – I don't know not to get too off topic, but comparing now to different areas and stuff is it's too complicated now. But hard. it's, it's a lot of talent in the league. It's crazy. Uh, with that, 
go ahead and go through your uh your starting front court players. So I think I don't remember when they officially made the switch. It's been a couple years now, but for y'all listening or watching, the starting lineups are two guards and then two front court players. And we base these lists off of the official NBA. If you go on their website and vote, these are how these players are you know, listed position wise. So don't get mad at us if somebody's listed as a front court player and you view them as a guard or vice versa. Right. This is how the NBA views it. Uh, right. So go ahead and go through your your three starters in the front court. My three starters this is actually pretty easy. It's Giannis and beating JT. Cut his dry. That that's probably the the lock of this whole thing. Like yeah. you don't have anyone else ahead of these three. So that's and I don't even really need to explain. It. I mean, obviously, you know, Giannis and B, all these guys are obviously playing one of the best players in the league. Um, playing like an MB, uh, MB MVP conversation, Giannis is always going to be in the MVP conversation. Mm-hmm. JT as well. Like, they're always going to be in that little bubble. All of, three like, of them. Could possibly win the MVP. Um, best players on their team, playing like it, great records. It's just, like I said, that's the lock of, like, any. if there's something that probably shouldn't change, it's probably that them three is the starting front court. Yeah, that's – you could put that – etch that in, write it down in Sharpie. It's locked up Facts. Um, for the exact same reason. All three of those guys were MVP – caliber players all three of them are in the mvp race jason Tatum's a little bit further out than the, the other two but um they're gonna start and it's well mm-hmm. deserved for them and all three of them have their team sitting at one two and three in the eastern conference for that reason mm-hmm. um now is where it gets a little bit interesting i'm gonna go through and give my two official guard spots for my bench again on the bench it's the same setup you get two guards, three front court players, and the last two slots to round out your roster to 12 is two wild card slots. So it can be two of whatever you want. Two guards, two front court, one of both, whichever you want it to be, however you, you want to get those last two guys in. So the first guard I have coming off of the bench for the Eastern Conference is Tyrese Maxey, um, who still is putting up ridiculous numbers. Um Average of over 26 points a night, almost seven assists. Uh, he's shooting 45% from the field, um, 38.4% from three, which again on his volume is like that is elite, elite shooting. The shot making has been unbelievable all season. Um, he has moments where he can really just full on take over games from a scoring perspective. And he does it with and without Joel Embiid because he's still been occasionally in and out of the lineups. I think he's actually at the point now where he can only miss like seven or eight more games before he actually yeah hits that game threshold yeah so you need to be you need to be a little bit careful about that but Mm -hmm. um yeah he's done it with or without joel um he's clearly the the a budding star in this league um very very well deserving of him to get the the nod as a all-star this year uh the second guy i have as a guard is damian lillard who again the Bucks have their issues on the defensive side of the ball. They don't have issue putting up points. Uh, and a lot of that is due to the combination of Giannis and Damian Lillard. Um, he's obviously putting up 25 points a night. I'm still giving you about seven assists a game. Um, and the clutch play is still there. The shot making is still there. He's a guy who at any given moment, there's been multiple times this year where he comes out, has a slow first half. And in that third quarter, he just hits like one or two threes and then, all of a sudden, he goes on his own like 10 0 run. So mm-hmm. he's still the Damian Lillard that he's always been. He just got a little bit more help. They've got some work to do roster wise there, but from an individual play, clearly having another all star season. So those are my two guard locks from off the bench out east. 100%. Definitely, definitely solid. Definitely solid. I was going, listen, I was going back and forth um, with this second one. I have the same as far as. Um, who was it? Oh, yeah, Tyrese Maxey. Um, that's also like my guard lock. I have Tyrese Maxey in there. And I was flipping back and forth between Damian Lillard and Jalen Brunson. I was too. And I'm just like, I didn't I ultimately went with Brunson. Um, I just like what Brunson gets. Obviously, you know, Damian Lillard going to, to Milwaukee, he's obviously not the best player on the team. He still has the stretches where obviously he can take over the game, especially later in the games. He's still doing that. But I just like the fact that Brunson is to me. Brunson's the, he's the guy on that team. You know what I mean? Even though Julius mm-hmm. Randle has been playing like better, Jalen Brunson is the guy on that team. I feel like he has a little bit more responsibility as far as you know his load and everything like that. And he's been super efficient. He's been playing great. He's been pretty much facilitating everything in that offense. 
And I feel like in the Knicks, was, they've been playing well, especially after like the OG trade. They've been playing very well. Mm-hmm. Um, so ultimately, I kind of led Brunson. But again, to me, those two was kind of like a toss up. So it came down. It's just Nick picking at that point. Like you could, all, it, you either way, you could also say like, all right, the Bucks are what was the one or the two seed right now. Right. So it, you can kind of, it to me, it kind of flip flops. But I went with Brunson. Yeah. Not nah, t- look, not to bury the lead too much here. Brunson is one of my wild card players. He was gonna make the All Star team for me regardless. It's just 100%. a matter of if I have to divvy up who's the guard position. Who's that's the wild really card. what it is. <laughs> It really don't matter that much as long as they are on the roster. So Let's Brunson say, is one of my wild card spots, and that was the same thing. I was like flip flopping between him or Dame. It don't mm-hmm. really matter at the end of the day. They both they both coming off the bench. Yeah, I, I about that, I about to say that part to me. If it's not like starter to bench, the wild card the ultimate to me that part really don't matter because best believe Damian Lillard's on my he's on this team too. All right. So uh, bet. So then go through your your three fours coming off the bench for the East. My three fours, I have Bam, I have Paolo, and I have Jalen Brown. So mm. I have I have Bam. Now, this part, this, honestly, this was a little bit interesting. I went with Bam because I like the way Bam has been playing this year as far as aggression. And then I'm, you've probably seen that little, uh, little graphic, like his points per game has went up every single year he's been in the league. Yeah. He's been super aggressive, and then the defense is always going to be there. The defense is all – the versatility is always going to be there. You can always count on that. So if I get an aggressive Bam, I'm fine with that. And I want him to get rewarded by making a little all-star team. I went with the young guy, Paolo, because to me personally, I just – the fact that he is the guy on that team at such a young age, people don't realize that also – care. that comes with, like, a lot of burden. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. even when people try to I – mean, when people get on young players for, like, saying, like, not being efficient, like, their first or second year, things like that, but they're the guy taking all the shots, it's like, come on, bro. Like, let's, let's be real. It's, it's different than you're playing along alongside someone else. So I give Paolo the nod because, one – He's playing great. Two, he's so young. Obviously, the Magic, they kind of slid down as far as, you know, their standings a little bit. But at the end of the day, he's still playing well, regardless of where they're at in the standings. Um, and his statistics also has improved. Um, let me see. I, have, I think I have it pulled up here. Yeah. I mean, like, points per game went up by, like, two. The main thing is the three-point percentage definitely went up, took a huge jump. Mm-hmm. But I honestly, I just think he's playing well, and I think he deserves that nod. And then my last guy was, who was it, Jalen Brown? Oh, yeah. 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 Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is just – it's Jalen Brown. He's 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 been consistent as far as like scoring the basketball. He's actually able to play like he's been playing better defense. But I think that fact that they have more like defensive help as far as like having Przingis as a rim protector, having Drew Holiday there as well. Um, he's able to kind of lock in a little bit on defense. Um, and I think honestly, to me, the reason why I went with Jalen Brown and I thought about some other guys in the in the front court spots, but. I wanted to use my two alternates on guards because I wanted to try to get some people that I really feel like like really deserve it. Mm-hmm. So ultimately, I just went with Jalen Brown as my last like front court spot. Got you. Uh, mine is very similar, right? I have Paolo for the same reasons, um, bro. When he plays, he's such a. It, it's like refreshing in the sense that like he feels like a blend of old school like small forwards with like perfect blend of what the modern NBA needs out of that position. Mm-hmm. Like he gives off like Carmelo vibes at times. And like, sometimes I thought at first that comp was getting a little bit overhyped, but you can see it when he does get in the triple third, when he does get in the post, the feel that he has to be able to score the ball for himself. He can do so much more out of that at that size. So he's playing phenomenally. The magic are still playing great. Um, he definitely deserves a nod in his second year. I he's have Jalen, and he plays like it, right? As he should. Mm-hmm. Um, I have uh, Jalen Brown here is one of my front court slots as well. Again, all for the same reasons. Uh, Celtics being one of the best rosters, he's still being the contributor, second option on that team. For my third front court slot, I actually gave it to Scotty Barnes. I like that. Who part of it? Is again because look, like I said at the beginning, we're gonna have to be crazy nitpicky <laughs> when we get to these <laughs> last slots. Facts. Uh, I don't think he's missed a game this year. Okay. Yeah, he's played 40 out of 40 games for the Raptors. Um, he defensively is a pest, bro. He's a menace. Like when you watch the Raptors play, which I've made a concerted effort to do more of. I've been doing um, more after the trade. Right. I've been doing more of a Raptors games after the trade. Um, I'm watching him pick up guys full court, 94 feet. Right. 
just cause, like not even in an intense part of the game. Like he just, he's got the energy to do it. He's scrappy, he uses his length well. Um, you know, obviously putting up 20 points a night. He's giving you nine rebounds. He's giving you almost six assists. He can be a help defender. He can be an all bond, on ball defender. He just does so much for this Raptors team in terms of positive impact. Um, that really goes a long way for them. So I think he's deserving of an all star nod. He's a guy that I do think when this comes out does have a good chance to be one of those snub players. Mm -hmm. um, and again, part of that might really just be due to the fact that the Raptors are not good <laughs> as a team. <laughs> uh, you know, they're sitting at 15 and 25. But in terms of just on court play, you know, Siak Siakam's counting stats might be a little bit higher than his. But impact wise, I think Scotty on both sides of the floor. Um, when you factor all of that in, is the biggest impact player on this Raptors team. Uh, and, again, we're just kind of like scratching the surface of him being comfortable as a, you know, creator and facilitator in this offense. So I think he he deserves a nod to be an all-star this year. I like that. Like I, said, like I said, I've been watching more Raptors games. Because mm -hmm. I tell you, I'll be honest, I wasn't I wasn't watching a lot of Raptors games before the trade. Because to me, they had no direction. I don't like a team with no direction. Yeah. But, you know, they kind of fit their – got pe people to fit their timeline a little bit better around Scotty Barnes. Yeah, they're a little bit – to me, they're more enjoy enjoyable to watch. So, I like that, though. Like I said, everything is – bro, you can argue against – you can All argue right. against pretty much almost everybody. You can argue for almost anybody in the conversation. But I definitely like that pick for you. And now we're down to the two wild card spots. <laughs> I'm gonna go, we should go one by one back and forth. So I'm, I'm going to give the first wild card spot. And I'll do the one that I already let y'all know about. Jalen Brunson, again. <clears throat> he is the guy for that Knicks team. Matter of fact, I don't know that we ever talked about this on the podcast. Do you see what Becky Hammond said? Yeah, about this. He's too – like, all right. He, what do you – I honestly personally I never seen like the actual uh like interview itself. I just mm -hmm. seen all obviously like the cold tweets and everything like that. But what I'm guessing what she said was like you cannot win with a like a small player, which right. kind of is yeah. like true. Like not it's not kinda. like it's, it's, it's kind of like, factually true. I was about to say it's factually correct as if it's not Steph Curry, there's been no small Steph guard. and Isaiah Thompson Isaiah, are the I, only two like Guys who have led their team at that size to a championship as the main scoring option. It's not to right. say that they're not all NBA caliber players at that size, but when have they been the number one guy and won it? I actually was just literally, bro, just happened to be doing work and just turn NBA Today on when that happened. Like I watched it live before it got on Twitter and everything. And I was like, bro, Kendrick Perkins is bugging. Like she's not disrespecting him at all. She's just, she was saying herself as a shorter player, she always needed to have a, a dominant wing or dominant big to play with to be that number one option mm -hmm. because you can't. It's basket. She was like, basketball is skewed towards taller people. Like the game That's is how it works, bro. <laughs> for it to be easier if you're taller. So, like that whole discourse, and I know Knicks fans are going to hold on to that. Some of them, some of them understand that what she said wasn't disrespect. And I think anybody knows that Becky Hammond is a legend of just basketball in general. She's not out here giving out ridiculous takes for no reason. What would she benefit from that? She's saying herself as a smaller player, she just understands what it takes to win. Historically, it's hard, borderline impossible to do it, 6-3 and under, as the number one scoring option. There's really only been two that have ever done it, Steph and Isaiah Thomas. Right. One of those yeah. was 40 years ago. So, right. and the other is an alien. So, like, that right. doesn't really that doesn't really count. But yeah. in either way, I think people don't. People got it so wrong because, like, the other Brunson will have a good game, and people will be like, "He's not too short to do that." And I'm like, "Bro, you're missing the whole point of what she." She was saying. talking about <laughs> winning a championship, not beating the Raptors, in, right. in and, January in a regular season, bro. Yeah, people, people just don't. Like people never fully understand what she said because what she said was not wrong and it right. also wasn't disrespectful. It's, yeah. it's actually pretty factual. So I just think it's funny. Everybody took that and ran with it. Every good game Brunson has, that's all I see is like six one, but he could drop forty though. I'm like, yeah, we know that. Like that's, that doesn't change what she said. The headlines and the clickbait stuff on social media, even when they like show the clip, it just 
People who just get that little snippet that they need and run with it. Y'all got to Y'all got to get the context. And if you're still ignoring it, even with the context, you're just being ignorant at this point. Mm-hmm. Cause she presented a very fair argument, which is backed by facts and threw herself into it. Like she has nothing to gain, not just trying to demean Jalen Brunson. So not to get too sidetracked, but I still can't believe that that's a thing that people are talking about consistently. <laughs> like you said, after Knicks games where he has a great game, people keep trying to throw shade at Becky Him and like what she said was wrong. It wasn't wrong, bro. Anyway, that's my my first wild card. So I <laughs> mentioned the East. Who you who you guys your first wild card? Yeah, I also kind of like spoiled a little bit. I got Damian Lillard. Um, not gonna yeah. go too in depth because you already talked about it already. Damian Lillard still playing well. Like I said, all, defense has some problems, but offense still doing great. I definitely like the fact that you know later in the games, even when he doesn't have it going, he definitely still steps up and be that closer for him. Um, and yeah, you know. I just, it wasn't pos- I wasn't keeping Damian Lillard off this list. I don't care if he was a reserve on the bench. He was not being off this list. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's my <laughs> that's my first wild card slot. Okay, my last wild card slot, the twelfth man on this Eastern Conference team, is Trey Young. It, I I can't. There is no way I feel like he can't make the All Star game. It already was crazy to me that he didn't make it last season with the stats that he put up like 26 and 10. That's not all star this year. He's averaging 27.5 and 11 assists with low key. If you have been tuning into Hawks games regularly, this is probably the most locked in we've seen Trey young on defense in his career. It's not saying that he's this otherworldly all NBA, all defensive caliber defender, but there is a, like there's been a, a for real for real step up in his effort level. He's getting I've seen him multiple this times this year, like just do that little move where he guards like rip people as they're going up for you know layups at the basket. Yeah. It just little things. He's trying to be more <laughs> effective on the defensive side of the ball. And that goes a long way, like, a long way. Like we talked about sometimes defenses really just want to, like, are you going to try to put in the effort? Um, so that's part of why he's also averaging a career high in steals too. Like 1.5 steals a game is nothing to scoff at. I know that's not like the telltale, whether you're a great defender or not, just how many steals you get. But like I said, Helpful. if you've been, if you've been watching, you can see that that is a direct result of him, like actually making an effort to like go hard at rotations on the, when he's on the weak side and just, like, have active hands. So between the fact that he's up to scoring and assists from last season where I think he should have been an all-star, he's also giving you more on the defensive end. The Hawks are in a wild spot. Like, they low-key almost blew a 30-point lead to the Spurs yesterday. They got a, a lot, a lot of problems there in Atlanta, but Trey Young is an all-star, bro. Like, you can have your – qualms or issues with his style of play or just how he's been after that you know eastern conference finals run they had whatever the case may be bro 27 and 11 is all-star that's an all-star play bro so he he might cut out by the way but we heard you say that's why he's an all-star um yeah that's why it happened as my spot in that last spot too there was no way i'm keeping him like honestly it's really because of what you said the fact that he did not make it last year with similar stats and that's also another reason i mean like i said it doesn't really matter the slots as far as like reserved or uh uh, in the bench spot. That's also a reason why I gave Brunson the nod just because i wanted him to be an all-star the fact that i felt like he could have been an all-star last year so that's the same reason why, why i have trey in here because 27 11 Honestly, even if you weren't even watching the game, you just looked at 27-11, there's no way you're telling me that's not an all-star. There's no way you're telling me that that don't deserve a bench spot, like, at, at the very minimum. So, um, to me, yeah, all for, all for the same reason. I'm not going to reiterate pretty much everything, but that's why I have Trey Young as my uh, my last all-star spot. And I think, honestly, I think we have the same exact team except for Jalen. No, no, no. It was a bam for Scotty Barnes. The mic still cut out. I was still bugging. It sound it's doing the Alvin and the Chipmunks thing again. <laughs> the technical difficulties. Why 
while you guys are waiting, uh, use code SeatGeek. Um, or no, use off the glass for SeatGeek for twenty dollars off. Yeah, there you go, there you go. For twenty dollars off your first SeatGeek order. Are we back? Is it still we sound? back? Okay, you ran a little. See, the, uh, we meant to do that. It was just a little ad in there. A little ad read. I mean, facts, facts. But you know, we did. We have the same team except for I have Bam, you have uh, Scotty. Yeah. Hey, That's look, funny. you might be buying tickets to the All Star Game, and if you do, I mean, use code off the glass on SeatGeek. Twenty dollars off. Get you some oh. that might get you a popcorn and a water these days, but hey, that's more than you, <laughs> it's more than you was gonna have otherwise. <laughs> we need to go to an all-star game. That'd be mad yeah, fun. I need I need to go to like everything. Like I need oh, to the go weekend. To the yes. weekend. Yeah, yes, I need to yes, go to the yes, whole yes. thing. Um, I don't know if you do. I have a list of like the tightest snubs. Like I have like just a list of guys that I was considering, and the guys at the top of this list. Julius Randle was a guy I considered, like you mentioned, he's been playing much better. Uh, you know, after this first couple of weeks of the season, after he got to that egregious start <laughs> to start the season, um, it's felt like he's settled a lot less and he's like really made a concerted effort to just be like, I'm bigger, I'm stronger, I'm going to get to the basket and score. Mm-hmm. Um, so he definitely is a guy that is deserving of an all star slot. You know, he's putting up 24 and seven or 24 and nine, excuse me, um, which also now he's the uh second leading rebounder on this team or no, I'm, I'm still capping he is the leading rebounder on this team right now without mitchell robinson so that load has gone push even more on his shoulders um he's deserving of it uh you mentioned bam is on your list he's a guy that i really really wanted to fit on and again if we could just have that extra one or two slots he would easily have made the team because if y'all watch the heat video i put out i went into big depth about why i think bam is having an all-star caliber year He's playing at the same all defensive level that he always does while elevating his offensive game. Um, other guys on this list, you know, Porzingis is having a good year. Siakam, I mentioned. Uh, Jimmy, I just think he's missed too many games. Marta Rosen. Um, Derek White, you know, Derek White, big, big impact guy. Some people big say impact big, guy. Some people elite, say role, elite player, role player. Elite role player, right. Role player shouldn't be all stars, but I don't know. Some nights he really be taking over for that Celtics team, bro. So. Facts. He can step up at any given moment. Yeah, he definitely it's, is at least worthy of the consideration. Hundred percent. I think we have pretty much all the same. I didn't make a list, but like those are guys where I were con- was considering as well. Yeah. Um, even like I wish like a guy like Lamelo Ball didn't get hurt because I feel like right. he was playing great. He could have been in here if he didn't get hurt. Um, low key, low key. I know they suck. Kay Cunningham hasn't been playing bad. He's been solid. I know they stink. <laughs> I couldn't hey. give him a nod, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I could mention him right here and yeah. just say it. But, yeah, some hey. guys are just missing too much time, really. They coming off a win, you know? <laughs> coming, Yo, that's the wildest thing to say in the 82-game season. <laughs> <laughs> they coming off a win. Like, what? Four and 36. <laughs> give it up for the Detroit Pistons, baby. Four and thirty six is nuts, bro. What? <laughs> but nah, yeah, it's uh pretty much all the same people in that little like bubble that just barely missed the cut. Yeah, I think it's wild. People have been saying like it's mathematically possible for the Pistons to break the record again for the longest <laughs> still this season because they did like they did it so early to start the year. That's funny. Uh that's the Eastern Conference. That's our All Star teams. Um. We're going to transition over to the West now, which, like I said, in my opinion, Ooh. it's it, bro. The list of names I got, like, I think we had fair arguments for as to why a lot of the guys who we just listed as snubs, like, you like, ah, you didn't play enough. This just, you know, stat wise, it's not their impact is not the same as some of the guys we got. I don't really have a lot of good reasoning for some of the people that's about to get left off this list, other than Adam Silver, like- we need more slots, bro. <laughs> I like this guy a little bit more this season. That's right. all. That's all it is. Like, cause like, but and that's the thing. That's why we gave you the little disclaimer. Like, don't come in the comments. Like, I can't believe y'all left this da, 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 because he's doing everything you say is probably right. I have right. No argument against it. It's just <laughs> I got nothing to say to you. Max. So yeah, it's, it, this one's a little tough. Okay, we we gonna jump it off right off the back. Cause I think again we probably had the same starters, maybe one different guard wise. I don't think there's any way that you can. Not pick these two, Luca and Shea, Fact. two two guys that are you know up there in the MVP race, rightfully so. Both are putting up like absurd stat lines on a nightly basis. Luca's putting up 
33.6, 9.1 assists, 8 rebounds. Shea's putting up 31 tonight, 6.3 assists, 6 rebounds. And I want to double check, but I feel like he's leading the NBA in steals per game. He is at 2.3 a night. Yeah. Um, I think an estimated plus minus, he's actually the second player in the league, only behind Embiid right now. Just like ridiculous impact that he brings to the Thunder on a nightly basis is why he's there. I think tied for the one seed. They were tied for the one seed last. I look another one game back because um, they lost last night to Lake the Show Lakers. <laughs> yes, sir, Lake Show. Um, but but yeah, he he's a big reason. The biggest reason why they're in the spot that they're in out west. Those two guys, hands down, got to be the starters. I have no – same two. The only reason you'd put Curry is if you're a Curry fan or you're just going off names because <laughs> there's right. no – it's them two. They're, they're, yeah. the, they're, the guard, they're the guard starters. So roll me through what you got in the front court for Star and out west. Okay. In the west. Come on, man. You know I had to have – I got Bron, I got AD. You know those my – I got to put – Ooh, we do got a different one. Bro, I had to – there's no way if my guys is playing good enough to be in the cut, I'm going to give them the nod. This is, this is what that's it fair. is. That's fair. This is what All-Star is about. Little that's fandom. what I'm saying. I'm, a, that's what, I mean, I'm fine with him in that. And yet, listen, you'll never get a full, like, take out of me where just, like, if it's bias, I'll admit if it's a little bias. Because, like I said, you they're all in the cut, like, in that bubble. So if they're all in the bubble and we're nitpicking, hey, give, me the, give me the Lakers guy. Give me the guys in purple fair, and gold. Fair. So, but honestly, though, AD's been playing great. He's been consistent. Mm-hmm. He's been healthy for all the people that want to be like, oh, he misses games. He, he can't stay healthy. He's been healthy. The defensive impact is always there. Offensively, he's been playing great. We do suck, but him and LeBron, him and LeBron are the two bright spots. Like, we, we've we been, that's the part. Now, let me stop for getting the Lakers rant. They, the Lakers <laughs> have been uh, playing bad as far as, like, losing games with their two best players playing well. So it's good as far as this little all-star nod. Not good as far as the Lakers' future. But nevertheless, I got them two, and then I got Jokic, who – do I even need to explain why I have Jokic in here? No, you do not. That's the joker. Yeah, that's all I got to say. Only difference I got is I have AD coming off the bench. Uh, starting, I do have Kevin Durant. Absolutely. Because yeah. then – that was the one. That was the one too. And I was just like, yeah, let me put the Lakers guy in there. Why not? Right. It's definitely fair. But KD's he KD. I don't think we need to go much into that. He giving you. I think he put up twenty seven tonight, right? Twenty nine. I cap. 20, mm-hmm. 29, 29, six, I 29, check, six yeah. and six. It's Kevin Durant, bro. Trust me. If I if I wasn't a Lakers fan, KD would be there. He KD deserves to be there. Like I said, put my Lakers guys in there. Fair, fair. All right. I'm a quick, easy through the starters. Get to the nitty gritty. Oh, boy. The West bench was tough. <laughs> For my guards coming off the bench in the West, I again, I think same way that it was these two were the locks of the starters. I feel like these two got to be the locks coming off the bench in those guard spots. And that's Steph and De'Aaron Fox. Mm. Because, I, like, Steph is Steph. Like you said, the Warriors dumpster fire right now. Why you dumpster fire right now? <laughs> Aside from that, bro is still Steph, still playing some <laughs> of the best basketball of his career. He just got no help. It's tough to see, but it is what it is out there. Mm-hmm. De'Aaron Fox, he giving you 28 a night, six assists. This Kings team, again, is like still in the mix out west. They're sitting at the five seed. They get some, you know, they have some tough losses here and there, but they do. I come out and beat some good teams. They have recent wins over the Magic, recent wins over the Suns, recent wins over the Thunder. Like, they can on any given night scrap and fight with anybody. And, again, a lot of that is due to the fact that De'Aaron Fox is one of the most unguardable players in the league right now. So, got to give them both the nod. That felt like, again, another cut and dry spot for both the guards out west. Easy locks. Same reasons. Like, Obviously, you're going to put Curry in there. There's no way you're not going to have Curry off that bench. And then De'Aaron Fox is playing great, shooting the heck out of the basketball, make, like I said, making himself unguardable. And they've been playing well recently. So definitely got to give Fox a nod there. So that also, yeah, the guard starters and bench are definitely locks. Okay. Let's let's hear your, your front court off the bench then. Yeah, this is where I think we're really about to get – our list got to get different. If our lists aren't different after this, we're just – we got the same minds. We're locked in. We're locked in. <laughs> 
You might be very shocked though about about one thing. You might be shocked. Okay. So I got all right. For the sake of it, let's just pretend we have let's just pretend you have Katie for me starting. Because it's like that's basically the same. Like I said, if I wasn't a Lakers fan, Katie would be starting. Okay. So Katie's off the bench, but probably should be a starter in place of AD. I got Kawhi Leonard. Mm-hmm. Now, I got Kawhi in there because at the end of the day, hold on. I mean, I don't have his stats pulled up, but at the end of the day, the Clippers are playing great. And Kawhi has been healthy. Kawhi has been available. And at the end of the day, he's Kawhi Leonard. He's still going to give you great numbers. I don't know exactly. Let me see what I – if I can pull it up here. 24, like 24 and 6. Yep. Yeah, like, I mean, especially because Kawhi is always hurt a lot in the regular season. Like, he's never he never had, like, insane regular season numbers. Obviously, every single night he can go out there and be the best player on the floor. So, I definitely got to give the nod to Kawhi. And, you know what I'm saying? If I'm being unbiased, I gave a spot to Rudy Gobert. Oh, now, you're crazy. What? I'm, I'm wrong? I'm I'm – of you of all people gave it to Rudy Gobert. If I'm being honest, bro, if I'm just being honest, right? This is wow. the way I see it. This is the way this I see it. This is the way I see it. You remember when you remember when um when LeBron didn't get the defensive player of the year and Marc Gasol won it, but he was second team all yeah. defense. It's like bro can't be the depoy and not be an all-star. Like that to me, that don't really he can't be the depoy and his team has the number one seed. They have the number one defense. And he not even be an all star like that to me. That just don't really, I don't know. It, it don't really make sense. Like I said, I'm not even a Rudy Gobert fan. I'm really yeah. not. But if I'm being unbiased, I think he's, I think he should get the nod. I was, I mean, I was looking at some of the other people that. Um, let me see. Let me try to pull up the list again. Some of the other people that could could have in here for the front court. I don't have it in front of me. I mean, there's definitely some people that you could put in here. There's Paul George. There's Laurie. Um, there's Shangoon. Shangoon definitely could have a nod there, but at the end of the day, I gave it to him just because, like I said, he's playing well. He's probably going to win Defensive Player of the Year, and they have the number one seed, and they're the number one defense. So it's like the impact is there. So I put my bias to the side, and I was like, I give Rudy Gobert a nod. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all just saw something I don't know we'll ever see again. <laughs> this man just gave Rudy Gobert his flowers. I, I gave I gave wow. him his props, bro. I gave him his props. He's he's been playing well. The team's playing well, and I like the Timberwolves. Don't get me wrong. I actually like watching Timberwolves. I'm a big Ant fan, so it's like, yeah, nah, give, give, you get take a little All Star. It's cool, but when you get exposed in the playoffs, yeah, just know <laughs> I'm back. I'm back, hey, I'm back. Wow, that's crazy. That was a crazy curveball. That's not the name I thought you were going to throw out there. You see? Yeah, exactly. Uh, shoot. So off my, my bench for my front court, I got Kawhi, I got AD. Same reasons, not going to touch on it. My last front court spot, I actually gave it to Demata Sabonis. Okay. For these reasons particularly. Like I just had mentioned about the Kings, they're sitting, you know, right in the thick of it out west. He is averaging 20, basically 20, 13 rebounds and eight assists. That's a wild stat line. It is a crazy stat line. Like, I it it would be crazy if he doesn't make the all like the all-star team this year, purely from his counting stats perspective and being on a top five seeded team out West in a year where the West is this competitive, you know, Mm -hmm. it felt like he has to make it on top of like, actually, when you watch him play, you can see the impact, how much he does um, for this team as a facilitator um, kind of playing in those DHOs passing out of the post. Like he's such an intelligent player. He has to, he has to be on this team in my opinion. So he ended up not even getting to the wild card round for me. He gets a lockdown for front court spot coming off the bench in the West. Okay, I like that. I definitely like no, that's that's not a bad pick at all. Definitely not a bad pick at all. But that's interesting. You know, we got a little you switched up a little bit. Oh, we're gonna switch up a little every now and then we're gonna switch something up. Now, this is uh this is is gonna get kind of tough. You could pluck a name out of a hat for these last couple, and I I can't argue with it. Bro, you want to just go go for it? You want to just go into it? I, I'll throw my first one out there, the one that I'm most comfortable with, and that's Anthony Edwards. He got to be up there, bro. No, one seed out west. He got to be up there. 
I got Ant too. <laughs> I got Ant too. You can't. I cannot have him on this list, bro. It's impossible. Yeah. If Shay, Luca, Steph, and De'Aaron weren't having the seasons that they were having, he wouldn't be like. And again, like I said, the wild card bench guard spot, like it don't matter. He wasn't gonna start, so he has to be mm-hmm. on the bench. So I'm not. It's not that deep between trying to nitpick between him, Steph, and De'Aaron. Right. Um. But he he got to be on this list. So, Ant locked in wild card for both of us. So, now it's down to the last spot. <sighs> and I'm going to be honest. I made my list two days ago. And I changed it right before we recorded because <laughs> I talked myself out of a player. And I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking I might have to change it back. So, maybe. <laughs> so, maybe I should go first. Yeah, yeah. You go first. <laughs> um, personally. Like you said, this last spot, bro. I I could I could pick anybody. I could change my mind right now. I just gave it to Devin Booker because he's Devin Booker. <laughs> like, what do you even want me to argue? Like, it's hard for me to even argue why he should be above other people because other people are also having great seasons. Now, Devin Booker hasn't missed some games. Actually, let me see exactly. Before I give him another. Let me see how many games he's actually missed. Hold on, because I know he's been in and out of the lineup. I might have to knock him down a little bit. You know how many games, like, just off of the top of your head, he's missed this season or no? He has missed nine. That's not terrible. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. So, I'll give it to Devin Booker. Devin Booker is playing well. Um, I had his stats pulled up right here. I think he's definitely – he's 26 and 7. Um, the assist definitely going up because he's having to play that point guard role a little bit more. Now, the Suns aren't great. But at the end of the day, this is all-star selection, so it's not, like, fully – got to be a great team to be an all-star. Um, and just with the options that we have, like I said, you can't really go wrong here. So I decided to get it out of Devin Booker. Okay. Obviously, Devin Booker is a guy I consider for this last spot. He didn't get it. <laughs> I, when I made the list the first time, in my wild card spot was actually Alperin Shangun. He impresses me so much when I watch the Rockets play. And again, it feels like we're still just scratching the surface, not just because of his like development. Like that's still, he's still young. That's going to continue to grow, but like they don't have the best pieces around him. still. like they obviously still can improve that roster around him. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's tough because counting stats wise, Comparing his stats to a D book or the guy that I think I'm going to slot in as my last wild card spot, which is Kyrie Irving, it's like just it. it's tough. And literally, again, you could make an argument for all these guys. This was my reasoning for putting Kyrie in. Kyrie right now is putting up what is this? Tw- basically, 26 points a night, five rebounds, five and a half assists. These last couple of games, he has been tweaking out, bro. Last 10 games, he's putting up 32 points a night, seven and a half rebounds and six assists with two steals. Bug. I'm, I'm, bro, I'm about to read out his point totals from his, this was his last five games. 35 on 52% shooting, 33 on 44% shooting. 44 on 57 percent from the field against the Knicks, 33 on 44 percent from the field, and then just last night he put up 42 seven and seven on 46 percent from the field against the Pelicans. He game numbers, bro, going crazy. Like, I mean, it's Kyrie. We know obviously the the handles, the scoring ability, the ridiculous finishing, all that is on full display. So it's not biased in the sense that it's like, oh, I'm a fan like that. It's a little bit biased in the sense that it's like, it's just so impressive. It's like, (laughs) I got to give it the little. If I got to split the hairs and give somebody the nod, that's where I'm going to go. But looking at who I have left here, actually, you give your last wild card slot before we do that. Oh, I thought I gave Did I not give my? Oh, I did. It was Booker. Yeah, Booker was mine. So, for that last spot, realistically, 
Shangun, like I said, he was in there for me before I made that swap. Devin Booker, who was your last wild card guy, obviously. Zion, they what the what are they the five seed out west right now? Or no, that's the, they might be the four seed. I just said the Kings are the five seed. They're the six, the seven six seed. seed. Oh, seven seed. Oh my. Again, they, well, they, they're they're they got the same Mavericks. record. Yeah, <laughs> they got the same Mavericks. record as the, the Kings, basically. Um, but like the Pelicans having no All Stars, that seems tough. But like none of their count, <clears throat> they're like their counting stats are also like tight with each other. Mm-hmm. None of them like leaps out. It's nobody. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that's tough. Uh, Lori. Lord Markinen again has a great case. Obviously, the Jazz are the Jazz, but stats wise, again, he's giving you 24 8. That's you know, he's an all star type all-star player, mm-hmm. right? You had Rudy up there, he's a guy that I felt like again deserved it. Probably gonna be a defensive player of the year. It just it's not enough slots. Paul George, if you want to get a little freaky, Chet, I was about to say. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I say you could low key throw in Chet, Wimby. Wimby. If you're just talking about people in the bubble, they they got st- like it's just tough because it looking at it compared to everyone else, it doesn't look like crazy stat. That's like 19 and 10, and I don't have his block total. It's probably like freaking seven blocks a game or something crazy. It's good, great stats along with great defense. <laughs> and that's for both of those guys, like with Chet as well, as far as his impact. Right. He's 17 to 7 with probably another crazy amount of blocks. I don't even have it pulled up, but those are great stats. Wemby is averaging 3.2 blocks per game. See, like that's crazy, bro. Like that's that's those are great stats. It's just like, oh, when you look at it compared to someone else, it, the box score doesn't it just doesn't jump out, but he's been well. He's been solid. And I think in the little um like what's it? Like the little fan voting like tally. Mm-hmm. I just I look at that just to see what what the consensus is as far as like what fans think. They're up, like they're in here because of like obviously popularity wise. Yeah. Like their their names are in here and low key. Not to get too off track, I didn't think Shangun was gonna be this high. He's like six in like voting. He, he, you know what part of it is? Um, they, I don't know how they got them to do this. If y'all know anything about like overseas basketball, especially in like the Turkish league or Euro league, they had multiple Turkish league teams like put out tweets like, yo, go vote Shangun for the all-star game. Mm. You know, on Twitter, retweets basically count as votes. Right. And it was like, bro, like big rivals in the Turkey league, like both supporting Shangun and trying to make the all-star team. That's so fire. that was actually a big reason why I think his votes got up there like that. That's fire. Because I'm just thinking, like, I'm talking about from a fan perspective. Like, mm-hmm. like, all right, if we're talking about from a fan perspective, Curry is ahead of Shea, which is, like, understandable. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I did not expect Shingun to be that high. But when you put it that way, that makes sense. But that's a, that's dope, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, look, for all of y'all listening and watching, I, I know some of y'all might be typing right now. How, <laughs> how this person ain't get on your list? But before you even do that, if you're going to say that, I need to see your full list. Facts. I need to see your full full list. Just 12. You got 12 slots. And then be like, ah. With explanations. Right. Because it's ridiculous, bro. We just I, we just sat here and listed. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys who you can make real legit cases for who cannot fit in this 12, 12 roster spots. Bro. It's ridiculous. Side note, because I'm just, I'm looking at this list. I never like really looked at this list. You know who's number four for the guards in the voting? It's gonna be some wild. James Harden. He been going crazy lately. No, you know who's number eight? Oh, De'Aaron Fox. That's a, a Harden being Harden, and now he's in L.A. type of thing. Do you know who's number seven? <laughs> John Morant, who was barely played. Hey, when he came back, he was going crazy. He was. I ain't gonna lie. He <laughs> was going crazy though. But he, come on, bro. He he can't. Even I don't even think if he played the yeah, like, the football, he couldn't even make the team. So, yeah. but I'm just saying, like, like you know, number ten is Clay Thompson. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> like, like bro, what are we talking about, bro? Uh, nah, speaking it's, it's of to look at speaking of John Morant though, get well soon. This has been the 
worst possible year for him. Yeah. Uh, and so for him to come back and like really light a fire under this Grizzly team to the point where we were up here and I was like, well, even when Ja gets back, they've dug themselves too much in a hole to within like maybe two weeks. I was like, shoot, they this is a playing team. They're going to make the plan and then <laughs> they're going to win in the plan and they about to give somebody hell in the first round at least. Mm-hmm. Tears his labrum in practice. That is so unfortunate for this team. It puts them in a really weird spot where people, I know people have already started to make the comparison. Like when the Warriors had all those injuries that year and like they're a good team, but they're about to have a top three pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're kind of sitting in that spot because not only now is he out for the rest of the season, you already had Brandon Clark, who's coming off, I think, of the torn Achilles from last year. Steven yeah. Adams is out for the whole season. Marcus Smart just smart. like broke his finger crazy. He's going to be out for a while. Desmond Bain is now going to be out for a while. So it's like they're about to just full on, I think, send the tank, get the good pick and reload for next year. Which kind of goes full circle and is a nice little segue into this next pick about this or next topic that we have here on these quick hitters around the league. Because last night, this same shorthanded Grizzlies team just beat the Warriors. They're like, so bad, bro. Kind of handily, like down the stretch, it was close. And then the like the Grizzlies pulled away by like 12 points in like four minutes to go. That's and they, so they just didn't have enough. The, the Warriors just did not have enough to keep up. Bro, what, like, how are they this bad? It's, honestly, it's insane. Look, look bro, the starting lineup for the Grizzlies in this game. Um, it, it is wow. Vince Jesus Williams. Christ. Luke Kennard. Zaire Williams. Xavier Tillman. And Jaron Jackson. And Jaron Jackson shot four for 20 from the field, and the Grizzlies won this game by nine points. And it was, again, like I said, a little, a little bit closer than that. Bro, what? Or a little bit further than that. I don't think it was that close. Excuse me. Bro, even us who in the offseason was like, eh, I don't know about this Warriors team. I don't know. I would have never expected it to get to this point, bro. I did not. I wasn't going to predict this. We just we just was talk, like talking about how it's like uh right the Raptors they're that meddling team they need to blow it up the the Hawks having a similar record we're like ah they need to do, make some major moves mm-hmm. the Warriors are in that same spot or the Grizzlies are fifteen and twenty five the Warriors are eighteen and twenty two they're right there like this is this is your comp <laughs> like <laughs> not for real they said uh it was like. I don't know how true it is. It was like everyone's on the, the block except for Steph Curry. And it, it, that should be the case. 100%. Which is should be like that. Crazy, but like that is how it has to be. Clay Thompson was a minus 22 last night. He's just, minus he's, 22. He's so done, bro. And it's so it's tough to see like, you know, like th- this era end like this, but it has to, bro. They're cooked. It's over. Yes, there's no more salvage in this. You're not you're, t- you're not even gonna make the playoffs with this team, let alone win another championship with it. So no, you gotta it, and while Steph Curry is still like in his prime, still able to be that guy, you gotta try to do something to win now and build a team around him. Yeah, drastic, drastic changes have to happen around like you said, just Steph. That means that you gotta put Clay's contract on the table. You gotta put Draymond's contract on the table who came back last night after I think what ultimately ended up being a 12 game suspension for 360 Superman punching Yusuf Nurkic in the face um I ain't gonna lie I, I was hoping he just came back and just punched somebody in the face in the first game <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> just, like just cause just like be like you know what I ain't learned nothing mm, just like rock somebody did you did you watch his interview uh or not his interview his episode that he put out okay. on his podcast I seen clips I didn't see the whole thing yeah the most telling part was, I think, him saying that he went to Adam Silver and was like, I think this has just become too much for me, and he genuinely was about to retire. I, I, I've seen that, but, like, what's too – you not being able to punch people in the face is just too much for you, bro? What's what's too much for you? 
I, I'm not about to sit up here and call a man I've never met in my life a liar. I don't know. He could have really felt that way. That's not for me to judge. But like you just said, these are issues that you're creating them, bro. It's not like you're like something is happening that you have to react to. Facts. Whatever was going on between you and Jordan Poole, like, bro, he, you're the vet. You swung on him. You swung on Nurkic. You put Rudy in the chokehold. You kicked LeBron right. and Steven Adam in the nuts. Like, these are your actions, you know? It's not like there's these crazy external forces that got to be, unless there's something we don't know. And if that's the case, I don't know. But just from how I can view it from a fan's perspective, you cannot be trying to pass it off. Like, it's just it's just all too much. And you're create, You're creating the too much. And it's not like the league is, like, bullying you or you're getting picked on and, like, the punishments are super harsh. Like, you get the you get passes. Like, mm -hmm. you punch Jordan Poole in the face and you was still there for ring night. Like, it took you to punch someone in the face after choking someone out to fully get, like, a legit suspension. Like, you've been getting passes, bro. So, like, I don't know what's the, the, the too much for you when you're causing everything. Like, if I'm playing devil's advocate, the only thing I could possibly say is, like, even then, it's his fault. I was about to be like the like the reputation now that like I right, like he's a dirty player, he's a bad guy. But it's like you like you're the reason why it's right. not like that. So I can't even really give you that much of a pass. And that's not even nothing new, bro. People have been saying about that for you for years because this yeah. is not nothing new. It's not nothing new for you. And you were embracing it. It was cool. It was fine. Like Warriors fans loved you. Everybody else's arenas hated you. It's you good. That was your role, right? It's fun and it's fun when y'all win it. All that is like it's fine being the bad guy when y'all win it. Dylan Brooks have it was having mad fun. Right. Like, bro, if y'all losing or if you're just you're on the bad end of it, it's not fun. Or if you're like your skill has diminished to where it's like not as effective. It's, it's, it's not as it's not right. as fun. It's not as rewarding. We not that far removed from him being in Memphis and they booing him and they playing whoop that trick during a timeout. You remember he out there with the yeah. towel going crazy. Like exactly. he, that was him. And that's okay. Like you don't Love it or hate it, he was being himself. So mm -hmm. just, I don't, I don't know. It feels so out of left field for him to say that. Yeah, I, I so, just, to me, it doesn't. It, it comes off as like you're not self aware, bro. Like you're, you're doing this yourself, bro. This is you, this is your doing. Right. Um, and then he said that you know Steve Kerr went over to his house and they cried. And cried, yeah. They look. I think there is some realness to the fact that it's like. They all been together for so long. And what Steve Kerr said made a lot of sense. Like, like you just said, it's tough to see the dynasty look like this, like how they're going out. He just was like, y'all need to go out the right way, which I don't even think necessarily means winning more rings. If y'all never get another ring, that doesn't really affect any of their legacies in my mind. Mm -hmm. if this is If that was it for them, bro, not many teams have constructed a core that's won four championships. Like, y'all are in rarefied air off of that alone. What y'all can do is mess up y'all's legacy by doing what Draymond was doing, by having bad seasons to this kind of level where it's like we might actually have to trade some of y'all and so bad. That's how y'all can go out the wrong way. Facts. So y'all need to figure it out and get it right so that just from a legacy standpoint, you don't tarnish what should be y'all's flowers for the rest of time in terms of basketball. Uh, 100%. 100%. But, I, I, look, I don't know. I don't even know what you can do at this point if you're the Warriors. Like, I, what's it, Bob Myers? Bro, he got out there at the right time. Bro, oh, he, see, he, the writing was on the wall. He he known. Like, that should have been – that should have told y'all already. Like, when he was out of there – he wasn't trying to make them hard decisions. He I tell you one thing, he wasn't about to trade Clay. He wasn't about to try to trade mm -hmm. Draymond. He was not about to burn that bridge. It's like, now nope. we're gonna leave on good terms. Y'all remember me as the guy who paid y'all, who kept y'all around. Yeah, that's how y'all gonna remember me. You, this other dude, Dunleavy, that's the bad guy, bro. He the one that split y'all up. He's smart. He's smart. He smart. I, look, if I was Mike Dunleavy, they'd offer me the job. I'd have been like, hold up. His contract up. His contract about to be up. All right, we got who? Who on the market? Chris this, Paul trade. 
This team, not it. Nah, I'm this straight, ain't the bro. One. Yeah, this ain't this ain't the one, bro. This is this is a setup. This is a trap. Uh, what I will say, bro, if he find a way to maneuver some stuff at the trade deadline and get this team halfway decent, kudos to him. But I I don't know how. I really don't know how at this point. I will say, I said the same thing for the Lakers that year we had Russ, and somehow managed to get something and work something out. So I mean, it's. It's hard. Don't get me wrong, and it's probably not gonna happen because that's not a, a good way to construct a team. We yeah. just got lucky, but it's not. I wouldn't say it's impossible. It's just you got you got flee somebody, or <laughs> you got flee somebody, bro. But this is what I will say: when y'all did that, y'all had two star mm. players playing like star players, and a third guy in Austin Reeves who was he was there, competent mm, and ready, ready to contribute. But this Warriors team. A lot of nights is like Steph versus the world, bro. That is true. Yeah. Cause even if they bring in like competent people, it's still probably not gonna be enough because it's still gonna be Steph versus the world, just a little bit better. Cause it's like, bro, I don't know how Moody don't get minutes some nights. Like, I just it's it's all so crazy to me. The whole stuff going on with Kaminga, how that whole situation has gone down recently with him saying that he's been frustrated with how Steve Kerr is handling his minutes. They had the – I don't even remember what game it was. They blew the 18-point lead to Denver, um, and he sat Kaminga. Yeah, the whole, the whole fourth rest quarter because he mm-hmm. said it was Wiggins' turn to go in, and then Wiggins had been playing decent. By and the time they, I was going to put him back, it was it just didn't make sense. It's like, what, bro? What are you talking you about? Just, you just watched your team blow an 18-point lead and wasn't trying to make no subs at any point. I don't know, bro. They got it's a problems, disaster. Coaching problems. It's a disaster out there in Golden State. So, like you said, for for their legacy sake, I hope they at least get it competent. I don't know that they'll ever be able to really compete for a ring again. And, again, that's okay. But not like this, bro. Not with the off-court drama. Not looking like y'all about to be a lottery team. Don't go out like that. Steph deserved better. And I hope he I hope he in the front office right now raising hell for a trade because he man. deserved better. Listen, Steph, man, he deserves better, bro. He deserved to be in that Lakers, that, that Lakers uniform. Man. Yeah. Senna, we got Austin Reeves, Cam Reddish, Rui, and, and, and two p- picks in 2085, bro. What's up, bro? Let's, let's, win, let's win this ring, bro. You deserve better than this. Uh, you got anything else you want to talk about around the league before we make the quick pivot to, to Super Wild Card Weekend? Honestly, nah, because we got a lot to talk about the Super Wild Card. So I'm ready, I'm ready to talk about that. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Because it was, oh, uh, man. What a, what a wild weekend. It, what it a was, super wild weekend. <laughs> one, only one close game. I think the rest of them were actually two scores or more losses. Yeah. It had to be something that would felt, it was, even if the score was. Actually, no, you're right. No, every Everybody, single one. The closest dang. one was actually Steelers Bills. You we we fight, baby. We fight. We we ain't gonna go down. We're gonna go down swinging. Put it that way. We knew we was gonna lose, but we're gonna go down swinging. But damn, yeah, everything else was a blowout except for the Ram Lions. That's yeah. Tough. Let's let's just go in chronological order. All right. Let's start with it. the first kicking off Super Wild Card weekend. You had the Texans and Browns face off in Houston, the teams that just made the trade for Deshaun Watson to get him to Cleveland. Joe Flacco is going on this Cinderella Cinderella run, brought the number one defense to the playoffs. And that number one defense got throttled by CJ Stroud. Cooked. Nico Collins is cooking them. How many quarterbacks are better in the NFL than CJ Stroud right now? Not seven. Th- maybe not six, maybe not five. <laughs> like, all right, realistically, Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he is at least in that next tier, legitimately. <laughs> he's in the I, – like, I, I mean, he's not locked to that spot, obviously, but right. I could make an argument he's in that spot. Like, I think – like. Talent wise, Herbert, you know, he's up there. Jalen Hurts. I'm not out on Jalen Hurts. People, I'm not out on Jalen. Yeah, I'm out on his coaching. But if I had to pick one to have moving forward, it is 100% CJ Stroud. Agreed. Not even not even a question. And then 
I don't even know who else is in that in that conversation. Nah, you're right. As you said, those the three that you put up there solidified. I mean, solidified, locked. Everything else after that, what Stephen A. B. saying is fluid. <laughs> <laughs> it, is fluid. It, is, it is fluid. It is fluid. Right now, CJ is Jordan Love. Matter of fact, hold on. Jordan, Jordan Love might be in that combo. <laughs> uh, look, 16 for 21, 274. Oh, hold on. Time and time. Lamar. Let's, let's not get disrespectful. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Lamar. <laughs> right. Let's not get disrespectful. Just because he had a bye, right. we, we, we got ahead of ourselves. Lamar's right there. You're right. Good catch. Good catch. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, 16 for 21, 274 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, the Texans they they pick six, Flacco twice. I know he had two yeah. picks, but uh, yeah, both, pick sixes. both pick sixes. A game got away from them immediately to start the second half, and the Texans just kept the pressure on. Devin Singletary looked great running the football on this one. Mm-hmm. Said Nico Collins. Lit them up. Brevin Jordan took a tight end screen like 80 yards to the crib. <laughs> it just that defense did not look like the number one defense. It was a complete flip flop of their game that they had played a couple weeks ago, where Amari Cooper had absolutely took the top top off of that defense. Amari had a relatively quiet day. Um, tough for the Browns because it's a great story for them to even get there, having started four quarterbacks in the regular season, but. Honestly, like you can't solely pin this one on Joe Flacco. Like it was a collective no. team breakdown on both sides of the ball. Like obviously the pick sixes kind of blew the game open, but defensively, bro, they weren't stopping the Texans at all in this game. No. Hey, bro, they were moving up and down the field, bro. It wasn't just the pick sixes. It was moving up and down the field in that Browns defense. Yeah. And who do they who do they play now, right? They Ravens. go to that's a crazy game. CJ versus Lamar, man. Whoever oh. on, right on top, going, we going all the way. Hey, you gonna have a whole league behind you. Whoever yeah. come on top got the whole <laughs> league behind you. But Oof. you know, it's a uh, no, nah, no. Nah, the Brown, the, the biggest disappointment was the Browns defense because at the end of the day, bro, if you're expecting Joe Flacco to continue this little Cinderella run and carry out to the Super Bowl, you kind of come on, bro. You need to stop. Every listen, we need to just know by now, bro. When a backup QB comes in, or just somebody coming in, unless they just completely suck, because some of them just like suck no matter what. You you gonna get like two to three, maybe four games of like little pixie dust where there's no film, mm-hmm. like they just playing free, and you're like, oh, hold on, Jake Browning, he might be Tommy DeVito, he Tyrod, like, <laughs> come on, bro, like at the end of the day, they were a backup for a reason, and then you'll see it over time. And that's what happened. And even when Joe Fackle was playing well, and don't get me wrong, he was playing great. He was throwing some dots. He was still throwing picks. Yeah. They, they just was getting masked by the fact that he was dotting people up. And that but defense was locking people up. It was. That, that definitely helped. So, yeah, man, I, I'd say, honestly, the biggest thing is the Brown defense because they're that's what was supposed to be elite. And the fact that y'all got routed, yeah, that, that's a problem. That secondary was cooked all yeah, it was game. Bad. It was bad, bro. Bad Nico Nico Collins is nice. Like he's a he's a really like I know CJ Stroud is good, but like Nico Collins is a it's a talented receiver. And they are missing Tank Dell, bro. You had Tank Dell to this this offense. Ooh. And like, yeah, yo, you had Tank Dell to this because he was going crazy too. You got Tank Nico and Tank on uh, both sides with CJ throwing the ball. Don Schultz, a nice little tight end. They just, mm-hmm. they nice, bro. They dove a single Terry too. They they nice, bro. They yeah, nice. that's they scary. They look, they're not about to because again, this is another team they wasn't even supposed to be here. Yeah, this this house money for them. They gonna give the Ravens everything they got. I don't think they're gonna get it done, but they ain't gonna go down easy. They don't got nothing to lose. That's the best part. That's the best thing. You are not supposed to be here. We have nothing to lose, bro. Let's just go out there and play. We don't even know what right. we don't know. Let's just play. The best playoff performances do sometimes come by the teams with no pressure because you see what happens to some of these dudes when they face the pressure, and I think that's what happened in the next game that night, which was Miami in Kansas City. It's like negative 30 on the field. I don't know how there was that many fans in the stadium. Y'all are crazy. Not better than me. Y'all are wild, but, yeah, Dolphins go down extremely sad, <laughs> 7 to 26. Uh, Tua doesn't make it over 200 yards passing uh, with a pick as well. Um, him and Tyreek did not have the 
connection. The passing game never got going. More than that, really, the run game didn't ever get going for the Dolphins either. And uh, Mahomes did Mahomes-type things. They threw the ball, I think, a lot more. I think Andy Reid said it that they think they had to jump on them because I don't think – he thought that Miami didn't think that they were going to throw the ball as much as they did in that game. Um, so they were able to, to produce a lot of offense from that. Pacheco running still like he mad at the earth. Swear. Um, <laughs> and that defense – that defense is legit. They was locking up Miami and uh, Rasheed Rice. You know, there was a Chiefs receiver that needed to step up. He's been the guy. Eight catches for 130 in the touchdown. 12 targets. He got that trust now. He built a trust. He, but he looks he looks good, too. It's not just like he's the only guy. Like He legitimately looks solid. So Yeah. No, he looks see, great. Script writers going crazy. I see it. All year we've been talking about this Chiefs offense stink. The receivers stink. They need help. Rasheed Rice about to snap this whole postseason. They're going to end up somehow back in the Super Bowl. Facts, I see facts. It. facts. I already see the writing on the wall. Facts, bro. But, <clears throat> no, nah, honestly, this game was more about the Dolphins, like, collapsing than the Chiefs. Like, yeah, the Chiefs offense looks solid, but they still had their red zone struggles, too, which is, like, their offense is – it's just not going to be offensive, like, years past. But Dolphins, Tua. Tua stinks, bro. I'm who like, do you who do you, who do you blame the most? Because I've seen all the talking heads Tua. go over this the last couple of, couple Tua. of days. Tua, it's like not even a debate for me. Like it's it's legit not a debate, bro. Because at the end of the day, because I, I the ar- only arguments I've seen was I mean obviously we're just talking offensively because you could blame the defense with the injuries and stuff like that. But if we're just yeah. talking offensively, the play calling, which is like. But when everything's going great, they're not like, oh, my God, Mike McDaniels is great. It's like, oh, look at Tua. He's doing great. Like, no. call, mm-hmm. Do the play calling then and now. But it's not the play calling because people got to realize sometimes you call plays based off of the personnel that you have. So if, like, if you this see This guy that, knows ball. <laughs> this guy right here, he knows ball. Because <laughs> if you were only calling screens and short intermediate passes, nothing deep, nothing like over – like nothing that an elite or good or great quarterback – you need to like call those type of plays. If you don't have that player, you're gonna call stuff to cater around their game, especially if you know your guy is kind of a fraud. Mike McDaniels is with Tua, like he worked with him every day. He know he not like that, bro. He knows that. He knows when everything is sunshine and rainbows and no pressure, seventy degree weather. Like, I right, he could light you up. But come January, come playoff football, come cold. You're going to see the screen. You're going to see the little quick dump balls. You're going to see all that stuff because he can't push the ball downfield. And he's not like a great playmaker, bro. If the timing's off, he's off. He looks terrible. So, that is to me, it's right on Tua. Here. Tua is not a quarterback that can excel out of structure. If Facts. anything, if the littlest thing, if if he can't just bong bong his read, if he can't, because he's a guy that can make a full field read. He can start at one and make it back to four, or start here, make it to the check down. Like he can do that. Intelligence wise, he's there. He's not, he just doesn't have that improv aspect in him to ever be able to really scramble out, extend a play. Like that doesn't happen. That's not what Tua is good at. And every time they've played tough defenses this year, even in games that they've won, that's been exposed. Mm-hmm. Like when you look, even if you go and look at how they kind of close out the year, um, like they had that close game against the Raiders where their offense was like sputtering. Max Crosby is in his grill the whole time. Mm-hmm. That gets into him and that throws off your timing. For a guy who plays with some of the best anticipation in the league, if you just can't really be like, I- I'm about to hit him here now, this is my read pre snap, you got it identified. Very difficult for him. They had the loss to the Titans, which was bad. Barely beat the Cowboys, which she's not that great of a team, apparently. <laughs> uh, and then they got throttled by the Ravens and then had the, the game against the Bills where the offense struggled again. Um, so he's just not a guy that can excel in anything out of structure. And going back to what Cam Newton said, which I'll be candid about. I was like, dang, he threw Dak in there. And this was, he, he said that like when Dak was like peak MVP. Was hoping, that, right? bro. I'm like, dang, that felt a little like harsh. That ate, that take aged 
gracefully. <laughs> right. Other than that, I was like, you know, he's spitting. It's right. I was like, I don't know if we need to throw Dak in there. I put my bias aside, bro. He everything Cam said made total sense. Nobody is going out here to draft the next. This no GM going to the head coach being like, bro, I'm looking for the next tour. You not? Nah. You looking for the next all. Mahomes? You're looking for the next Josh, Josh Allen. Allen, Burrow, yeah. Bro, even a Jalen Hurts. You're looking for a guy who nice. can be Lamar, somebody that can be dynamic, because that that takes you from being a great quarterback to like, yo, superstar. I can. Things don't got to go right for me. You give me the ball back down four. We got to go the length of the field. I can do that. Mm -hmm. And you gonna feel comfortable about that. I don't think they feel comfortable. Like you don't feel comfortable with a game manager like that. And that's not just like, bro, a a lot of the quarterbacks in the league are glorified game managers in that sense. It's hard to be somebody that can excel and make plays out of structure. Like that's why it's such a rare talent to be able to find. So everybody that was on Cam's head after that, I got a lot of explaining to do, bro. Because 100%. Especially if Brock Purdy get bounced. Man, yo, if Purdy play bad, if Purdy get bounced, Kim is the GOAT because he would have called it. And, and like you said, it's the timing. The fact you say it when Bro- Dak is playing like an MVP, mm-hmm. the not, just wait. It's going to play out. I'm going to be right in the end. That, it's going to be a great take. But, nah, yeah, you need you need the game changers, bro. The game managers is like – and and I, I think the problem is people think that when you say game managers, they think you mean like, all right, you can never win with this guy. He sucks. Bro, right. you can win with – the Niners can win the Super Bowl. Right, I still think Brock game Brady. manager quarterbacks have won multiple. Yeah. Bro, we watched Nick Foles win a Super Bowl. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Granted, he had the game of his life, but it's like things can happen with non superstar quarterbacks. We watched Peyton Manning go to Denver, he can't throw the ball but 25 yards. Like, won a Super Bowl, bro. Won a Super Bowl. Brady, before he was like really Brady, was a game manager, but they won games off just defense. Like low scoring games, barely was throwing any touchdowns, but he was managing the game. I obviously turned into Brady, but right. you can win with big game managers. The problem is everything has to be so perfect. Like every other aspect of your team has to be like elite mm-hmm. and everything still has to go right. Like everything has to go perfect game script wise. Like maybe he makes a play here or there, but like you cannot rely on him to make a, a, a any play out of structure or any right. big time plays because he can't do that. He can't carry you that he can't carry the team in moments where you need him to carry the team. That's, I think, the biggest distinction. It's not to say that guys who get lumped into that tier, like, Dak has been, was great out of structure all regular season. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that he isn't, in some regards, kind of a glorified game manager because you can't deny the facts. If things haven't gone perfectly for him when he's needed to be the guy to step up, that kind of go missing, bro. Yeah, it's tough. It is tough, but like that's a fair analysis of quarterbacks right now. But and I, I will say too, another thing that is making it so difficult to determine who's a game manager and who's really like that is everybody from this Kyle Shanahan tree, because that offense makes game managers look elite mm-hmm. to the point where like it's like confusing people. Like, is this guy really great? Jimmy G, he do be winning. He be he do be putting up some numbers. No, he goes to the, the Raiders and stinks. Loses his job to a rookie that's what, in like, like eight weeks. That's what I'm saying. Like, bro, Tua, he's putting up crazy. He got Tyreek. He got Waddle. He got this, this little this system. He's going crazy. Is he the MVP? No. <laughs> Rock Purdy <laughs> looking great. Oh, my God. CMC, little screen yard, screen 80 yards. Is he the MVP? No, they bro. <laughs> their game manager this system just looks insane. And somebody I forgot. I want to give this person credit. I just cannot remember who I heard this from. You know the Texans OC was Slowick, Bobby Slowick. Yeah. He's from the Shanahan tree, right? Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. This is what if you put a because I think CJ Stroud is a, le- a legit good quarterback. Right. Because you see the the flashes of arm talent, you see the improvisation mm-hmm. on top of what you need to succeed in that kind of offense. The mental wherewithal of like, bro, anticipation throws got to be there. Timing throws got to be there. Exactly. He has all of that plus those special traits you're looking for. So, and now you're seeing like, oh my god, if you put a a legit elite quarterback in like that type of system, 
the sky's the limit, bro. The sky's mm-hmm. the absolute limit because they already make it easy for you. But if you're uh, if you're still like the guy that can, you know, if stuff doesn't go great, you can create there. Bro, you're great. You're you're all set. But that offense is bound to be elite. So I thought that was kind of interesting. That's kind of plays into the, like the Texas success a little bit. But I don't know, man. Like this, the, the Shanahan tree is like blinding these these people from viewing these quarterbacks in the right light. That's a great take, bro. I didn't know that, but that look makes a ton of sense when you put it that way. Um, because that offense is you put the right pieces around it, bro. You can put a lot of quarterbacks back there and you will win games and be successful if you have a talented roster. And you all and what is the hypothetical everyone always says, like, damn, can you imagine? I don't know, Burrow at the on the Niners. Can you imagine like an actual elite quarterback on the Niners? Right. Yeah, because it would be like unfair like it wouldn't even be close to who's the yeah. best team bro it's that system plus the talent and if we get an actual difference maker in there quarterback wouldn't even be fair right and again this ain't to throw no shade at brock or any of the other guys like these are still guys who are good to great quarterbacks in the league you just you're not ever going to be in that top top elite tier if you aren't able to have one of those elite traits. If you're not a dynamic runner, if you can't do the improv out of structure stuff, if you ain't no crazy gunslinger, like I don't think Matthew Stafford got any of those traits, but he fit into that tier just off of the way that he plays. Your mic is muted, but the way that he played. <laughs> yeah, not my bad. I was saying like his, Matthew, you said Matthew Stafford, right? Yeah. Yeah, he got his, he's different because his arm talent is insane. Oh, Matthew Stafford is one of the best arm talents in the league. Like, right, hands down, it's not even close. So, it's not to say that we slight any of those other guys. It's just it, that's how the cookie crumbles, bro. If you just if you don't have one of those traits at an elite level, you, it's gonna be very hard for you to enter that kind of conversation. Sure. Especially if you don't have the elite talent around you, and when you do, people are always gonna question it, and rightfully so, which is what's happening right now in San Francisco and. And Miami right now, as they're kind of looking back at how their season wrapped up, bro, they were looking like early in the year Super Bowl favorites to come out of the AFC. There's a time where AFC was all muddy and you just have Miami at the top. I think we and, asked that on this podcast. We was like, is Miami legit? I think right. we were like, hey, at this point it might be. But, yeah, it, nothing offensive wise for them to get going in this game. So that's a tough, tough way for them to bow out with how their season. It just was so promising the the whole year. So for it to end like this, that's tough. And they yeah. only have so many seasons of Tyreek left. He said he wants to retire off of this contract. So I don't know. Most of it's going to get a year older. Obviously, he had the resurgent season this year, but you never yeah. know with running backs, bro. Got to pay to assume he probably don't want his extension because all the all them QBs get their extension a year early. I've seen people call that you don't extend him. I mean, I don't think that's the right move because again, even though he's not in that elite tier, it's not just like really plug and play. You can't really throw anybody back that's there because nice. it's not th- like. If you broke out the league, is like there's whatever, four, five, six elite quarterbacks, right? To get to like 15, that's another 10 QBs that are like good to great. You're not throwing none of these bottom of the barrel QBs in any offense that he's going to produce, bro. Mm-hmm. So you do kind of have to weigh like the risk or reward versus saying like you keep what you know and just, again, hope that everything kind of falls into place and you can get that type of Cinderella run. Like you said, Jimmy G made the Super Bowl. He made maybe one more play in that game. The Niners might have a Super Bowl championship. That's facts. So it's like you just – you got to maybe hope that that's how it's going to happen. And for what it's worth, I think from a talent standpoint, I think two is better than Jimmy G. <laughs> like, Yeah, definitely. So it's, Maybe you just it's, don't pay him like best – like. Because a lot of them guys reset the market. Maybe just don't try not to reset the market so you can still build. Like, because if you pay yeah. him like a well, like what uh, Herbert got and Burrow got and Hurts got, then it's like, no way. You're then you're locked into him, and you can't even really build like a all star type of team around him, like the Niners or something. You give him like a yeah. little, 
a, a good deal, but nothing crazy. And then hopefully you can build a good enough team around them. I've been keeping a dolphin stock going because I wanted to avoid this as much as we could. <laughs> the next game, three o'clock on a Sunday, Super <sighs> Wild Card weekend. Boy. I'll let you take this one, brother. You get, you it ain't even, it ain't even, it ain't even gonna be long. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet, bro. That was the most disappointing game I think I've ever watched in my life as a Cowboys fan. Which is crazy because I've seen a lot of them. I've seen a lot of disappointments. I watched Tony Romo fumble the hold. I watched Des Bryant make the catch that they didn't call the catch. I watched Aaron Rodgers. I want to say it was Jermichael Finley. I might be capping. Whoever he threw that dot to the tight end on the sideline in Dallas. This one was in high school. I was at your crib watching the game. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've seen us lose to the Niners in back-to-back years. Last year was super embarrassing. This tops all of that by miles, bro. Yeah. The game started 27 to 0, bro. Damn. The youngest team in the NFL pulled up in your stadium. You're the, the best offense in the NFL, and your offense is miles better when you're at home. Best home team, probably in the NFL. Mm-hmm. 20 down 27 to zero. If you don't score on the last play before halftime, it would have been 27 zip. Jordan Love looked like Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, Joe Montana, you name it. Any the greatest, he looked like the greatest quarterback I ever seen in my life. Got whatever he wanted. He was, he was, he's like 0.1 or nah, I'm capping, he's literally one point away from having had a. Perfect quarterback rating that game. Three touchdowns and 272 yards on 16 completions. <laughs> Bro, I, I I bite into it. I bite, I bite into it every year, right? I start the season with the very low optimism. Cowboys. Go out hot. I'm, I'm maintaining. They do like one or two really good things. I jump in a little bit. I'm still keeping it low. We get, I'm like, oh my gosh, somehow some way the Eagles collapse. We don't got the two seed. We're going to be at home. We see what we did at home all year. This got to be it. This got to be the year we make the NFC Championship game. Bro, you tell me all we, they would have had to do is go through the, do the Packers. And then the Lions. So all you would have had to do. And then you get to the Niners and lose whatever, bro. I, they got it. But you just get, get there. The championship. Y'all you just been the first 20 years. Bro. For them to come out in this game, run defense has been awful all year. We don't have no linebackers. After Lane Van Der Esch get hurt, I got hurt, I'm – Pretty positive we basically be paying play like base nickel all game. It's just safeties in the box. Mm-hmm. The run game been free food, which is why when you go back now and look at every team the Cowboys lost to and how they lost, bro, go look at their rushing stats in those games. Even that Car- Cardinals game early in the year. Cannot stop the run, bro. Couldn't stop the run against the Niners. Couldn't stop the run against the Eagles at one time. Start what James Cook did to the, the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. If you cannot contain the run and let teams get out ahead, the Cowboys team had no hope. And when it got to the point where, oh, you're down seven, Dak, what you going to do? Okay, bad first drive, whatever. Now you're down 14. All right, Dak. We need some. Not there. Him and C was not on the same page. I don't know what was going on with all this, whatever. They had some drama on the field. Uh, That is like, I can't even put that into my thinking right now because that's crazy to me as y'all really about to do that in the playoffs of all times this better be the last game i've seen mike mccarthy as a cowboys coach i better not see see him in that quarter zip ever again (laughs) ever never again bro i've said from the get-go before we started the podcast he was not the right hire jerry jones loves having the biggest name whatever 
Went out and got the guy who, yeah, Super Bowl champion winning coach a decade ago with Aaron Rodgers. He fired Kellen Moore last year because what? Because he felt like he didn't run the offense the right way. He wanted to run the ball more. Oops, we actually ran the ball less now. You're a play caller now. I, it started out, uh, it got better throughout the regular season. This is how the Cowboys do it every year. The regular season can't matter anymore. I don't care you the one seed or seven seed. You make it to the playoffs. You got to do something in the playoffs now, because you cannot keep getting to the the dance and you don't ever don't ever dance with nobody. You just stand on the side, stand in the corner, hands in the pockets. So I that better be the last game I've ever <clears throat> seen coached by Mike McCarthy. I, I I don't care what Jerry Jones just came out on the radio and was like he got another year on his contract. You know I I love what I seen from Mike McCarthy. You better take all that back right now. Especially it's with no the way, unavailable now. All right. There's no way. And I saved it for last. And now I'm going to end this rant because it's already going longer than I wanted it to. Hey, man, you got to get off your chest, brother. I've defended Dak Prescott many times, both on and off this podcast. I got no more defense for you, bro. Zero. It's none. None at all. <laughs> like, bro, the way that it started, I was like, ah. He don't look as sharp as he did, but, you know, we going to settle down. When he threw the pick, forcing the – the first pick was whatever. I think Brandon Cooks ran a bad route. He, like – Jair just made a crazy play diving in to intercept. It looked like a little whip route, whatever. The pick he threw to Darno Savage that he was trying to get the ball to CD, Dak was already in his head. The game was over. All the way over. That was a terrible. That was one of the worst throws I've seen. <laughs> that was a terrible read. It was just like that was just, you were scary. You're just scary. You're throwing Stevie's. You're throwing scary. Bro. Literally, user, <laughs> user alert. Yeah, yeah, bro. Bad, bro. And the rest of the game was just like all the stats that he got crazy empty calories, bro. The fact that he got to he got to 400, 400 yards. I don't care, bro. No, he was throwing. All these dots to Jake Ferguson. The game is over, bro. Over, bro. <laughs> Every single year. What did Cam Newton say? Nobody is out here looking for the next Dak Prescott, and that is why, bro. It's just it's factual at this point. I still think Dak is a good quarterback. That don't make him elite. That don't make him immediately when you you got to have it. That's not the guy I want with the ball in his hands as a Cowboys fan. It's just facts at this point, bro. You cannot deny what you've seen over this many years. It don't matter how many times I've defended it, this, that. doesn't matter, bro. Because in the biggest stage in the playoffs, that was one of the most disgusting and egregious choke jobs I've ever seen from any team across any sport, really. That was crazy, bro. There's no way you just lost to the Packers at home. You know the Packers have never lost in at t Stadium? You know the Packers have more wins in at t Stadium than the Cowboys do? And I forgot how many for how many years, but yeah. Ever since AT&T Stadium was built, the Packers yeah. are six and zero in the stadium. Three wins in the regular season, two wins in the playoffs, including the one that they just had, and they won a Super Bowl in AT&T Stadium. They calling that South Lambeau now. And you oh. know what? Right, it was snowing in Dallas after the game. It definitely is South Lambeau. South Lambeau. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Mike McCarthy need to be gone. I don't like. I don't know what you do with Dak. I it, it feel like the same situation with Tua where it's like a yeah, what you gonna do? You gonna get rid of him? I start Trey Lance. Jerry not going for no, no full on rebuild. So it's like I think Dak stays. Mike gotta go. Oh, bro, <laughs> off the strength, off the strength of saying that you wanted to run the ball more, and then this is how the season running game turned out. Done. That's that's cut. You you've been on a hot seat ever since he got hired. Straight, bro. The playoff issues are crazy. I also think I know I said I wasn't gonna even try to talk about it, but all that CD and Dak stuff on the field, whatever they was on the same page, they were talking with each other on the sideline. They both seem frustrated, bro. How many head coaches in a playoff game is allowing that to happen and not gonna go and shut that down? Not a lot. That to me kind of feels like you not from a player like managing personality standpoint you're lacking way too much bro because mm -hmm. that's not flying under certain coaches you obviously tempers flare whatever but like 
Bro, it was going on through the whole game. You even seen the clip? See, Jair put CD in the back, and he just like uh, ate it. That was crazy, bro. You, nah, bro. You just you're not fight. Nobody's fired up to play for Mike McCarthy. It's, it's just, bro. I don't like you cover you hit you hit everything. You, you cover, yeah. like, I'm not gonna you, I'm not gonna keep you honing in. Like you covered pretty much everything. It was embarrassing. It was it was bad. Even me, like, I'm not a Cowboys fan. I believed for sure that this was the year y'all were going to make it to the NFC Championship game. I not make not Super Bowl, not win right. Super Bowl. Not saying oh for sure you're gonna be the other. I was like oh, Eagles stink. I gotta have home field. This is the year y'all at least make it that far. I bro, I talked to Derek like two weeks ago and said. You know, it's crazy when you really think about it. All it takes is the 49ers to have one little slip up. Bro, NFC is sweet. We could get to the we get to the bowl. That's, That's the only team I was really concerned about. Not really fear. I'm not fearing. I thought I shouldn't have feared the Packers like that. Now I'm like, whoever we play next, yeah, the Rams be a little scary. Rams, Lions, Lions is a little all scary. Beatable teams. So like, right. Games that you could should win, and it would be at home. In facts. Only thing I'm worried about is having to go to San Francisco. But it's like any given Sunday, you know, they they whipped up on us earlier in the year. You just need to get one, just one. 27 to 0 against the, the Green Bay Packers, bro. Romeo so, Do- Romeo Dobbs out here looking like Randy Moss. I- <laughs> what I, what I'll say is from the Cowboys perspective. Yeah, I, I it, the defense to me. Obviously, it's Dak in the defense and Mike McCarthy, too, but Dak in the defense of a huge problem. The defense more so than anything because, like you said, they, they just they gave up whatever they wanted. And I think I've seen – I forgot what i seen it on. I think it was on Get Up or – I forgot what show it was on ESPN. They said out of, I believe it was 56 snaps, y'all, had, y'all were in nickel like 40 – four of them or something like no that. Like, linebackers no line, yeah bro. so like the run it was like so easy to just run all over the cowboys which you're not gonna i've been that. begging dan quinn to put michael parsons back at linebacker just a little bit bro first down please it's nobody in the box that they fear if mm-hmm. they can block up the four even if they don't make it to the second level you're putting safeties on these big backs bro mm-hmm. that's an extra two three yards every time the Packers were never behind the chains. Ever. They was getting like four yards over like I think that it was like four yards expected on, on a run play, like every player. Something right. it was something like I forgot exactly what the stat was, but Aaron Jones it, out here looking like Adrian Peterson. It was, yeah. It, it said, that's the thing, like, bro, you can't stop the run. And then as soon as they run that little play action, it's like, all right, cool. That guy's running wide open down the field. Like to me, that that was the biggest problem with the defense. Um yeah, that, that was terrible. But honestly. You hit on everything with the Cowboys, man. You really did. I if, if I'm gonna talk about anything, it's the fact that Jordan Love really is he's he's like he's that. him. He's him. He's like that. First playoff game, they come out here playing like that. Hey, well, we just he, said it, bro. When you're not even supposed to be there, you just playing free. And he's been playing good the whole like last month of the season. Mm-hmm. He's legit, bro. He's definitely legit. But as far as like the future. Def, Mike McCarthy is gone. I don't. He's uh, like, there's no doubt in my mind. He's 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 gone. He's 100 percent gone. It, it's really doubt gone. in my mind. He should be gone, but it's doubt in my mind, bro. If Jerry Jones keep Mike McCarthy, he's not serious about winning. He's not. You're you're, you're just actively telling me you're not serious about winning the Super Bowl. What has Jerry Jones shown you in the past that he is serious about winning? That is also true. Jay, you know? Do you know Jason Garrett is like the second or third longest tenured Dallas Cowboys coach ever in history? That's not okay. Jason Garrett. He just wants somebody in there that he can kind of control. That's the problem. He doesn't want to like an actual. That honestly, that's why. Because what I at first, because I said it one time too. I was like, oh, you get Belichick. You know what I mean? I, I, I think I'm pretty sure I said it to you. Belichick's not going there because Belichick is not going for none of that. No, Jerry runs the team. Jerry, I mean, obviously he owns the team, but Jerry makes the decisions. Jerry is is. And doing press conferences after games, like he's not. Bill's not going for none of that, bro. He's not going there. I'm sorry. Maybe no. you get Mike Rabel. Maybe. I don't want Bill either. Like I don't like, bro. I no, I don't want to get Bill Belichick. I don't. A, I don't want to see him in the Cowboys. That looked weird. It was but crazy. also, 
it's just like he's older. It just doesn't feel like it feel like it would be a short term thing. The three year window, maybe right. if that. And I don't know if that's what this. I don't know if that's what we need. I would like Vrabel partially because I just was saying I don't think the teams was was fired up to play for Mike McCarthy. Bro, they was out here fighting in Tennessee for Mike Vrabel, but they had nothing to play for, bro. Mm -hmm. Scratching and clawing just to beat the Jaguars for fun. Knock them out of the playoffs. <laughs> Vrabel will get that defense right, too. He'd make sure they fired up. He'd make sure everybody is out there ready to play, right? Mm -hmm. Real fired up. And he's a good coach. He's legitimately a good coach. That's what right. to me, that's why I said Mike McCarthy's definitely going because of the, the good coaches on the market. That's the, the reason why. If there was nobody on the market, I'd be like, Jerry might keep him just because uh he got us 12 wins in three right. years in a row. But nah, bro. If I if this you can is, get Mike, if you can get Mike Rabel, bro, McCarthy, you can pack it back right now. This is probably the greatest coaching window of our lifetime at this point, like with how many people are on the market between Jim Harbaugh coming off of Michigan and all the NFL talent that's, right. that's up in the air right now. Like, you got to make the move. Like, mm -hmm. to hold on one more year with what's available right now. And, like, yeah, it's going to come with a lot of pressure. But deep down, bro, a lot of people will want the opportunity to coach the Dallas Cowboys. Like, if, just the, the yeah. notoriety of it all. Yeah, and a lot, and and get. they they be thinking like, yo, all right, cool. They're like, I'm the piece away. Like, they just need a good coach. That, that's what some of them could be thinking coming into. Right. Like, Listen, they get a good voice in there. I can get this team to that next level. And if we being honest, Jerry Jones got a long leash. He don't have no yeah. one and done coaches. Guys get a lot of years of opportunity with the failures. Mm -hmm. I've seen Jason Garrett put out a lot of bad seasons. Yeah. In the regular season and then get to the postseason and flop. And like I said, he had almost a decade. He might have actually uh, – I, I got to look it up. I was, I he was there for that long? I mean, he was kind of the only coach that, in our childhood that I remember on the Cowboys. Nine and a half seasons, 2010 to 2019. He was there for – he was the head coach for nine seasons? Yes, bro. It went from – I'm – let me not mess my timeline up, but I'm pretty what? sure it went Wade Phillips to I remember him. Um Jason Garrett. It it went from yeah, Bill Parcells was 03 to 06. Wade Phillips went from 2007 to 2010. Jason Garrett was 2010 to 2019. Three playoff berths. Three NFC East championships. He won Coach of the Year in 2016. And I'm that pretty sure that was, that was Dak. Yeah, that yeah. was Dak's rookie year. They went 13 to three. Yeah, that was when y'all. That was when y'all was the one seed. But damn, no bro, that's NFC wild. championship appearances. Zero. Nine years. So I ask you again: Has Jerry Jones done anything? To make you real, I don't care what you say. Is he done anything that makes you really believe that he wants to win? Because if he really wanted to win, right? What, what's the quote? Insanity is the, is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Mm -hmm. You've been the GM of this team for how long, and you can't even make a conference championship. You got to give it up. You got to give it up. Yeah, I never mind. I don't, I don't know. I just, I guess we just gotta wait and see because you never, I guess you just never know what Jay because that really baffled me. The nine seasons, I baffled because I could, yeah, because when you put it that way, it's like he could definitely be like Mike McCarthy won 12, what 12 games past three seasons. Like he's a good coach, yeah, just, 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 a, just a bad game. How many times is how many times are you gonna get that excuse in the playoffs, bro? It can't man. be that many. I feel bad for y'all, Cowboys fans, man. The Houston Texans have the same amount of playoff wins since 2002, which was their first season ever existing as the Cowboys over the same time span. Bro. The, yo, this is a poverty franchise. I, the, the, and the, the worst part about it is it's treated like it's not, though. But in reality, it, like, bro, y'all going to the NFC Championship just because the thing is, like, y'all talk about and when I say, yeah, I mean, like, Jerry Jones himself, like, Michael Parsons, like, be like, yeah, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Like, bro, if y'all just made it to the NFC Championship game, not even the Super Bowl, that would be, like, y'all best season in, like, my entire life. <laughs> like, y'all don't need – Super Bowl, y'all need to be 
We're ready for the Packers wild card. Like, I need to be one We game need at a time. two playoff wins back to back. That's it. That's all I'm yeah. asking for. Is that too much to ask, bro? Two? Just put two together. I don't even care if you lose in the NFC Championship. I've never seen my team make the final four in my life. I'm 25 years of age, bro. That's not okay. Damn. Not okay, bro. That's where I'm gonna leave it. Cause I could I like it reached a point by the third quarter. I was legit, I was just laughing at the TV. Like this junk, this junk is comical, bro. It's this is a joke. Literally, y'all are a joke. You got Michael Irvin out here making wild <laughs> videos on Twitter. Like Jimmy Johnson was on the halftime show giving a speech to America. I don't like embarrassing, bro. It's insane that y'all went out that sad at home. Insane. Tough. Yeah, that's tough. That's all I got to say. I wish, I wish I could know what it felt like to get a home playoff win like the Lions did. Probably felt great. In the the Matthew Stafford Jared Goff Bowl. Jared Goff came out on top this time. That was the best game of the weekend. Far and away. And bro, 22 for 27 for golf. But see, see, and this is not to discredit him, but this goes back to the game manager talk we were talking about. When everything goes perfect, no pass rush, good old line, good receivers, mm-hmm. good running backs at home in a dome. You he looks great. You know what right. I mean? He looks great in that scenario. And he's still a good quarterback, but mostly everything went well, you know. Mm-hmm. But as far as the game wise, though, nah, it was a really good game. But yeah, it's funny because even on the other side of it, like you see for the Rams, like everything wasn't going perfect for Matthew Stafford. He was kind of making plays, like his him and Puka, like his team was making plays. He had to create a little bit outside of just everything being perfectly all set for him. Right. We're trying to see the difference, but at the end of the day, Lions came out on top, and realistically, like, good for them, bro. They they, they needed that one. Good, the city good deserved it, they I, did. bro. They did. Dan Campbell, I clap it up, clap it up for Dan Campbell, bro. Facts. The fact that he really inherited this team and has turned them into a team that is one win away from the NFC Championship, and they have to be a Baker Mayfield led Tampa Bay Bucks team to get there. They about to do it, bro. But they really they're about to be, be in the NFC. They're going to be in the NFC Championship before the Cowboys, bro. Yo, the Lions are about to be in the NFC Championship, bro. That's crazy. And you know what that means? The Niners are going to the Super Bowl, <laughs> and it's a <laughs> lock. It's a, it's a lock. Unless, to me, Jordan Love gets a little freaky. And I wouldn't saying, be mad at it. I swear to God, I would crazy. not be mad at it. I would, that would but, then, be- but then the NFC Championship would be in Detroit. Like, that is <laughs> – bro, This this they going to blow the roof off for field, bro. Yo, can we get, like, a Texans-Packers Super Bowl? That'd be fire. That'd be yo. That would be. That'd insane. be fire. The Jordan Love, CJ Stroud Bowl would go crazy. Um. But. Yeah. Look, the Lions, bro. Shout out. Uh, shout out Dan Campbell. This roster, they rally around him. They play for him. Defense, like they making plays when they needed to. Um. Again, like you said, Stafford, he, the gunslinger that he always is. Puka Nakua. Who, bro? Ooh. Yeah, he's legit, bro. He the one, bro. I ain't gonna lie, he's legit. Cause I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I thought it was like a system, you know, Sean McVay. Sk- nah, nah, bro, he's he he's like that for real, bro. He be making plays on his own. I know, scheme me up, like give me the ball, bro. I'm gonna go get it. And bro, he's tough, bro. I'm t- yeah, bro. Fact. Some of them catches, it's like Stafford is throwing into some tight windows. Puka is up, down, Got strong hands, bouncing off people, like. They this is like as much as we give credit to the Lions, we do got to shout out the Rams. This was a they, bro, another team was not even supposed to be here, bro. This team mm-hmm. was not supposed to be in the playoffs, not supposed to be in the playoffs. The fact that they even came in and were this close to beating a very good Lions team, bro. Shout out to them, shout out to Stafford. It's a credit to their coaching and, de- and development and drafting, too. Puka's a fifth round pick, Kyron's a fifth round pick. Those are some studs, bro. Hey, nice. So they got they got a lot to build around there um, in LA. 
Nothing for them to hang their heads on. Um, this is the best game of the weekend. It's back and forth um, all the way to the, to the very, very end. So, shout yeah. out Detroit, though. They get two home playoff games, and they really, I think, are about to make the NFC Championship game. They're 100% NFC Championship. This, this, that's a lock. They're definitely in there. And then they're going to get waxed by the Niners because it's going to be in San Francisco on oh, grass. Yeah. They're going to get torched by the Niners. So, the Niners are going to the Super Bowl unless Jordan Love can be Jesus Christ again. <laughs> Which I'm rooting for you just because like I just I am too. I'm I'm anti Niner just off the fact why y'all gotta embarrass us like this, bro. And now we can't we don't even get the opportunity to get our lick back. I'll tell you one thing if Jordan Love goes into San Francisco and beats the Niners when Aaron Rodgers could never do it. Do we gotta have that conversation? We might have to have that <laughs> combo. We might have to have that combo, bro, because Aaron Rodgers could not beat the Niners to take his life, bro. If Jordan Love do it in his second playoff game ever, he's the goat. He's what I what player. I will say though is even if they lose, if he go out and start throwing it around the yard like he did against the Cowboys, oh, yeah. that'll at least make me feel like a, a little bit better. Because I was like, yo. We can't cover a soul, bro. Every receiver, Romeo Dobbs, Dontavian Wicks, Jaden Reed, Malik Heap, every Tucker Craft, Luke Musgrave, everybody was open. Yeah, <laughs> wide they, open. If they, if they do that to San Francisco, I'll at least be like, you know what? I know I like them. They're young. I'm be like, they, y'all different. If y'all go to San Francisco and do it to that defense. And so, it would have to be, it would have to be on the back of Jordan Low, because they're not gonna be able to run the ball like that. So oh, it would yeah. have to be like legitimately. We're, I'm just dying out, which yeah, it's possible. We'll see. Right. I mean, I'm actually, I'm really excited for that game. Hard to run the ball against a team with you know linebackers. That's <laughs> tough. Let's wrap up the 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 last two games because it's not too oh, much noteworthy. Yeah. Steelers at Buffalo. I, I didn't, yeah. We don't even need it. Good job, Buffalo. Congrats. Y'all keeping Tomlin or not? Nah? See the problem is like when we get Tomlin, it's like a locked in nine and eight. But I don't want to be nine and eight, bro. I don't want to do that. Like I'd rather. I'm telling you, bro. People do not realize I would rather be three and fourteen and get the first overall pick and yes. get an elite quarterback than be mid, bro. Being mid is not fun. It's not. Yeah. I'm telling you, I, bro. I, every week this whole year, when I look at the Steelers' schedule, I don't know if we're gonna blow them out. Win close, lose close, or get blown out. And this could be any team. It could be the worst team in the league. We can get blown out. We can play the freaking, I don't even know, and blow them, the best team in the league, and blow them out. Like, I don't know what to expect. <laughs> but I do know we're going to be 9 and 8. We're going to sneak into the playoffs. We're going to get blown out. We're going to get a trash pick. It's not fun. Yeah. He he walked out of his press conference there. <laughs> he ain't even let him get halfway through the question. He said, Mike, you have one more year on your con. <laughs> he is dead, bro. <laughs> So I don't know what the future holds. I, I I think it would be fair for them to part ways at this point because I I just think they're going in different directions, and I don't yeah. think he need to stick around for what's gonna have to be a full reset. Yeah, no, I want him to keep whatever team he goes to. I'm rooting for him though. Mike is my guy. He's he's my guy for life. Whatever team he goes for, I'm rooting for him. And I I hope whatever he do, he keeps his, his his winning record streak alive. Which is if he keeps coaching, eventually he's gonna stop. But I hope yeah. he keeps going. But if it stops, at least it'll be like with the Steelers always had a winning record. Fair. That is fair. You got anything else to say about your Steelers going into the offseason or no? Nah? No. Okay. <laughs> Last Justin Fields. Trade for Justin Fields. I'll take it. I'll take I just want something exciting, bro. I just want, <laughs> I just want something I can like root for and be happy about. So go That's trade for right. Justin Fields. I'll be cool with that. Fields to picking was that would be nice. That'd be nice. That'd be solid. Last game of the week. Finish off Super Wild Card Weekend. The NFC East is who we thought the NFC South really was. The NFC East, the real clowns. Apparently. The Eagles, if the Cowboys, like, even if they lost, if the Cowboys didn't go out as sad as they did, this would be a way bigger story. 100%. Way bigger. 32 to 9? Baker Mayfield threw for 337 and three touchdowns, bro. The defense is Swiss cheese, bro. It's like, it's um, it's like so embarrassing to watch. Like, it's like the Eagles came out and was like, "We gonna lose, bro." Like they just knew they was gonna yeah. lose the game, which is crazy to think. What I'm gonna say is, it's gonna be people this entire offseason who are gonna 
take how this season wrapped up to trash Jalen Hurts. Does he deserve some of the blame? And eh, maybe he's playing hurt. You know, you can't absolve him from everything. What I will say is y'all can go on YouTube and y'all find cut-ups and clips of people talking about the Eagles against pressure. There were so many times across this last little, not even, don't even just look at their one and six stretch to end the season. You can go back to when they was winning games. They was 10 and one and they scraping by against bad teams. They beat Patriots by five. They beat the commanders by like three. Like they are barely beating bad teams. They have no answer for anything greater than a five-man rush. None. Cover zero is the greatest kryptonite to this Eagles team this season, which is insane because it's been the same way the whole year. You would think at some point as an offensive coordinator or as Nick Sirianni being the also, you know, you're implementing your offense this year. At some point, y'all would see that and address it. There's too many times, even in last night's games, where – they're throwing six or seven man pressures, and it's like bro, fifteen yard routes going down the field. Hurts can't even. There's nobody for him to throw to. You cannot put all the blame on him, and you can't even put it on the O line because there's only five of them. You either have to address it by keeping more people into block, or we have to have hot reads. Dude's got to know I have off man. If this guy goes, I got to turn and look now. It ha- like. You have to give Jalen Hurts out or else he about to just run for his life, Mm -hmm. which is part of how he ended up getting hurt. So, look, what hurts more than anything is the fact that Jason Kelsey just went out sad because he's – Yeah, that's tough. In my opinion, the greatest center to ever play the game, at least of of our lifetime, I've gotten to watch the way he was able to be as dynamic of an athlete as he was being undersized and just a cornerstone for the position for a decade – but this is this is insanity, bro. To get routed by the the Bucks after all the jokes we made about the NFC South all year, that's insanity. So the NFC East, between what the, the Cowboys and the Eagles just put out in the playoffs, y'all the real laughing stock at the NFL this year. Hundred percent, bro. Well, Eagles, you just honestly need an overhaul with the OC and DC and maybe head coach. Maybe that's know. you know how bad you gotta look for your coach to be on a hot seat after going to the Super Bowl a year prior? That's why I said maybe because that's the only reason why you, I can see them being like, look, one down year, we still won, what, 11 games? Like, get a different OC in there, get a different – like, like I, he, he should be going into next season on the hot seat. I can see, like, he can keep the job if they get a like, different OC in there, but it, trust me, if they lose, if they go, what, a two-win – six to start the season he's gone he's out of there easily so it's either get rid of him now because of like if you can get a variable if you hey you can get a belichick if you can get one of those guys then yeah i just get him gone but if you're like listen our options they, say they already get hired our options aren't that great we'll keep them and if it goes bad we'll just fire him then i can see them doing that as well but they definitely need a new oc because that their playbook is qb draw inside zone screens gold slants that's all and a touch got, push. Bro. And a touch push. Yeah, that's going to get banned probably this offseason. So. And it got stopped last night. It, yo, that's when I knew. I mean, I knew it was over before then, but we, yo, when it gets stopped, y'all are so cooked, bro. It's over. The one thing y'all have. That's the – bro, honestly, if you told me – if I asked you, what's the, what do the Eagles do great? Not good, not solid. Like, what is the one thing they do great? It'd be nothing but a touch push. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing they did great all year. And you stopped it. It's over, bro. So get a new offensive mind in there. Scheme up something that's like makes it easier for Jalen Hurts. You like gets let's the don't do rely so much on just like your outside guys winning, the O line just being better. Like just scheme something up to where the offense doesn't look so bland and dull. And and you definitely will have a better result. So that and then sure up the defense. That defense was Swiss cheese all year. It's funny because this is almost like the opposite of the conversation we were having earlier about how you can have an elite coach and an elite system and put a non-elite quarterback there and they can like overperform their talent. Right, right. This is like the flip flop. Right. Like yeah. Jalen Hurts has the dual threat ability. We saw him last year have spurts of like 
playmaking, bro, elite arm talent, elite accuracy, the anticipation throws. He, bro, legitimately outplayed Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. aside from fumbling the ball that one play. For, for him to go from how he played like that to what he looked like this year, to what this offense looked like this year, that's like you have an elite player and like subpar coaching that you just it, you're dropping his level of play off of it. Mm -hmm. It's insane. I don't like. I'll never fully understand how you can be so far off as a coach to mess up like some of the elite talent that you're like you're, you're being gifted. You're walking into that. Wow, bro. That's Arthur Smith. I don't know. He's just. It's just some, some people just have that knack, bro. That's a talent to actively be bad with elite players. <laughs> that does not make sense, bro. You would think, like, as a bad coach, like, like if I like, if I don't know what I'm doing, bro, I'm just a bad coach. I'm coaching, like, I don't know, the Eagles. Like, yo, you see that number 11 guy that's bigger than every corner guarding him? Throwing the ball. <laughs> it's just right. like, he's throwing the ball. See what happens. Like, that's worst case. I don't know. Like, just give it, give your playmakers the ball. I don't know. So, it's, it's, look, super wild card weekend, super upset weekend is really what it felt like. Honestly, this um, is, I'm glad I ain't bet because I was gonna bet on a lot of these games. If you would have, if you would have had me be like, yo, you got five hundred dollars, you could all you could do is bet money line on one team. What's the team you most comfortable in winning? I would have really sat there, looked at you straight face. Dallas Cowboys. I would have said Cowboys too. <laughs> no I would have said the Dallas Cowboys. No way you lose at home to this Packers team. Like, you know, for me, they nice. They young. I they got some pieces I like, but they not they not on that level. Bad defense. Like that, bro. That's why I said I'm glad I didn't bet. Because if I put a little parlay together, there is a 100 percent chance Cowboys money line would have been on every single bet I had, and I would have been so mad. Right. So Crazy, crazy, crazy wild card weekend. <sighs> Ready for some more football next week, man. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm look at this point. I'm fully locked into the NBA. <laughs> I, I hear you. I don't even blame you. The Cowboys done hurt me one too many times, and I probably said that last year and probably the year before that, too. So, weirdly, exactly. it's like three, three, four, five times too many at this point. Bro. Um, man, man, man. Oh, you want you want to go through and pick the the divisional round before we get up out of here? I yeah, like you want you want me to say dry. Yeah, no, no, I got you. you want, we saying all of them like in a row? Or we going like you pick one or you pick who you picking for each game? Like go back. We can go we can go game by game. Okay, cool. So first one is gonna be Houston and Baltimore. Give me Baltimore. Yeah, you know, it be. I think it's gonna be a good game, but I think it will be too. But I will say, oh, that's what I was gonna say before. I'm glad. Actually, I'm glad we're talking about it. Listen, man, if CJ Stroud goes into Baltimore, like, I already think he's legit, bro. But, like, if he goes into Baltimore and he don't even got to win, but, like, play great, mm -hmm. th there's no doubt in my mind he's a top five quarterback. There's, there's, it's going to be a Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Lamar, CJ. I'm not taking no one else over him. Not a single soul on the planet if he goes into Baltimore and plays well, win or lose. I do not care. You better be ready. I'm about to clip that into a short. Yeah, bro, I don't <laughs> care, bro. I go ahead, bro. I just, I'll stand on that, bro. The okay. game six will probably be Jordan Love if he do the same yeah. thing <laughs> to the 49ers. So it don't Ooh. even matter, bro. Standing on that. Okay. Shoot. The next one is Green Bay and San Francisco. Still give me San Fran. Yeah, I like, give me I'll San Fran too. But I, look, we do, like we just said, let him go out there and start throwing the ball around like he did against the Cowboys, mm -hmm. bro. I wish I knew what it was like to just go from franchise QB to franchise QB to franchise QB. Yeah, must be nice, man. Must be freaking nice. Hopefully this time they get more Super Bowls out of it. They only got one with the last one. You'd think you'd get way more. but All right, Especially how much he'd be talking. Facts. You would think Aaron Rodgers had like five rings just the way like <laughs> just the way like every he's treated. Like you'd think he had like five rings, I swear. Yeah. Uh, Tampa Bay at Detroit. And we both gonna have Detroit cheapest ticket five hundred and nineteen dollars for Bucks Lions. That that's all Lions fans just like hype because they in there, bro. Nosebleed seven hundred dollars. There's no way you're telling me you're paying seven hundred for nosebleeds, bro. 
you know, that's the problem. See, I'm on the wrong website. I need you need to go to SeatGeek. Yeah, and out. bust down. They that. probably got better deals. And you know what I'm saying? That's 700. That's 680. Right. That just got you. That just got you a hot dog. That just got you some popcorn. Right. Let me see. Detroit. Detroit Bucks. Look at that, bro. Cheapest ticket 502. Really What's done that cool? We saved me out some cash right there. 499. It wasn't even nothing in the 400s on the the other website, bro. So, got it. This is my fault. That's me. That's me. I ain't look on the right, right. Gotta website. use the right site, bro. Gotta That's right still site. mad expensive, though. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm not paying that regardless. <laughs> I ain't gonna see geek or not. Twenty dollar code. I'm not paying that. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's crazy. Bro, this is the fun. Good one right seats. Thirteen sixty four. Ooh wee. Uh, last game though. Finally, 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 Josh Allen gets Mahomes on his home turf. Mm-hmm. This is I don't know, bro. I ain't gonna lie, man. I think is this, I still, is this is this the year? I don't bet against Pat Mahomes, bro. I just don't. Not in the playoffs, bro. I can't. I can't do it uh, on the road. Bad, so bad offense. Give me, give me Mahomes, bro. Give me Mahomes. I can't. I think. I think this is this is a game that I think. I'm not gonna say he needs because like he's already got two rings. Like he's already. Like he honestly, as far as a playoff QB, I think he's leading in like every stat. Like he's yeah. like insane. But like, if he loses this game, you know what the narrative is gonna be. If he's not at home in the playoffs, they can't win. Yeah, he's they're gonna be like he's winless on the road in the playoffs. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're gonna spin it crazy, spin it too crazy. So I feel like this is the one. Even if they like say they lose to like Baltimore in the next round, this is I feel like this is the one that they need, and I think he knows that. So give me, give me the Chiefs. I am going to also take the Chiefs. <clears throat> it, bro. I I struggle to bet against Cap- Pat Mahomes too. It's I don't Can't care do it, how bad they let offense looked in the regular season, bro. That's Pat Mahomes, bro. I can't do it, bro. I don't I care can. who they playing against. Facts. So, so yeah, and that's, that's the this one, gonna bro. be the this gonna be the game. That's the one right, yo. I can't wait for Sunday. Oh my god, I can't Ooh, wait for Sunday. That's gonna be the game. I can't wait. Prime time Sunday slot too. They doing it right. Mm-hmm. They, like, they, they did right. good with all these times. Definitely did good with all these times. It's uh, gonna be a dog fight. These all these all should be a good game. Maybe Bucks Lions. Like, eh. I mean, honestly, Lions secondary sweet, so Baker might be able to dot them up a little bit. So I, I, they all should be good games. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Better than this weekend. Facts. Ooh, dang, that is crazy. I don't even uh, know. Wait. Cannot wait. Are you still looking at the games? Yes, bro. I'm looking at this Bills Chiefs game. Oh, like who you gonna pick? Yeah, like I, I'm taking the Chiefs, but it is really like anything <laughs> could happen in this game. It should be a close one. This I don't think either way one team is gonna win handily. I think it I think it'll be like a max four point to touchdown, like last second touchdown win type of game. You know what I mean? I'm out here looking at the weather for the game, trying to get a beat on what that's actually, gonna look like. I hope it's a, a cold, like a even a snow game will be kind of fire. 26 and cloudy with a flurry in the afternoon. Yeah, the snow game will be fire. Like that Bengals Bills one last year. Like that, that game was tough. They need to put a dome in Buffalo, though. It's, it's out of control. There's just that's their personality. I I saw like uh somebody made like a TikTok video about why certain stadiums have dorm, domes and certain ones don't. It was like the ones can you notice like the ones in like those bigger cities like uh like Dallas, the LA, they like mm-hmm. use their stadium in the off season for like other events like concerts right. and things like that. Yeah. And like Buffalo, New York, like obviously it's still New York, but it's like Buffalo, New York. Say, yeah. yeah, they don't have as many events, so they just like, all right, let's just have the full football atmosphere. You know what I mean? So that's it. it really comes down to like football, man, toughness. Let's go, snow, sleep. Okay. We play and everything. But if they if they lose, if it snows on Sunday and they lose, and that's the second snow post playoff game that they lost in back to back years, y'all need to put a roof over it. It's done. At least- at least the mystique re- is over. <laughs> at least have a retractable roof to where it's right. Like, if you want to have a cold game, that's fine. But if it's you need fans shoveling the the stadium out, close the close the stadium. Bro. <laughs> right, close, bro. Close the door, bro. It's too crazy, too crazy for y'all to be doing that. 
Ah, uh, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up the episode? Uh, nah, man. I got to trade for a she rice back in Dynasty, but that's about it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. Well, with that, that is going to do it for the 45th episode of the Off the Glass podcast. We're getting close to that 50 ball. We're getting mm-hmm. close to the 50 ball. If you've made it through the whole episode, watching or listening, we appreciate you as always. Um, definitely be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and then head over to the audio platforms and drop that five-star rating and pre-download the show. And then follow us on the socials that you see there at the bottom as well. As always, I'm Billy Das Dame, and we out. Peace. Yes, sir. <laughs>